Good day, my fellow younglings, and welcome to episode 89 of Regen Rovers, where today is going to be a pre-season special. A number of you have been requesting this over the, well, the whole series, to be honest. I've had a few comments saying, can I see what you do in pre-season? How do you find regens? What What's your process in pre-season for preparing for the next season? Um, so I thought this is the perfect opportunity to do it. I have a little bit of time to just go through and record as much of this as possible. You'll see there's no face cam. I, it's going to be a long process for me recording this pre-season. And I will edit it down a bit, but be warned, this will be quite a long video because I'll be showing you transfers, ins and outs, uh, pre-season friendlies as well, and other things that we get up to. So we're going all the way from literally the 26th of May, which is the day that I finished recording the ninth season review all the way to the start of the season in August. So that's two and a bit months to get through. Now, at the end of each season, what I do generally do is I analyse the players a little bit. I have a look to see where we have been successful on the pitch and where we have not been successful on the pitch. Once again this season, our strikers were brilliant as you can see goals wise 25 goals from Drury 20 goals from pa uh, from Uda and 15 goals from Palmer Colin McGuigan a uh, Northern Irish striker also scored 23 goals out on loan so that's real positive coming back into the team and apparently he's already got the same ability as Uda and Palmer Drury is apparently quite clearly a much better striker than everything else we have that's according to my assistant of course and whether you believe your assistant or not that's another thing don't always believe the star rating, please don't. I know some people do go by the star rating or by this little thing here as well, it can be quite useful for them. But you do have to look at the attributes. And remember, there are hidden attributes behind players. There's consistency. There's important games. There's dirtiness. There's a couple of versatilities. Well, there's a few things that have a rating of 20 behind the scenes that you cannot see. You might be able to get an idea from your assistant he might say he's not very good at important games or he's very good he's great at bigging up his performance for big games or he's not a consistent performer you can sometimes gather that from the pros and cons of a player if if you have a good scout as well uh, they can find that before you even buy a player especially if you scout them over a long period of time rather than just doing a simple report card so there's a few things you can do to to find out the hidden attributes behind a player Anyway, getting back to the likes of Spencer Drury, he's going to be our key man again next year. If we're aiming for promotion from League One, then he's going to have to have another good goal scoring season. He's scored goals every single season for us. It's just he's not always been that consistent, has he? That's been a problem. We could bring in a couple of players to improve upon Larry Uda and Craig Palmer. Although, of course, we have a great affinity with those two. If I can find a better player that is on a free, on loan, or using the transfer funds that my board have given me, then why not? It's, it's all about trying to improve the squad as much as possible. If we want to improve as a team, as a squad, as a club, we have to always find improvements, don't we? So I often look at the player stats of the current league that I'm in to look at the top goal scorers. Of course, we can only sign regions. So the top goal scorer region in this league was Ryan Grace, who I had a look at last season. He looks good. I wouldn't say he's um, massively better than what I have. He's similar to Spencer Drury in a way. He's got a bit of an aggressive side to him. He works hard and he's got good teamwork, just like Spencer Drury. And some of his technical attributes aren't quite as good as, as some of his uh, attributes. But he's, he's a bit more of an all-round player than Spencer Drury. Then again, I don't think I could sign him for... Yeah, see, 400k is how much he's worth. If I suggested... Oh, wait, they've accepted 400k. But, yeah, I can't actually afford 400k. I was just literally bidding that to show that they'd probably want like a million pounds for him. Anyway, um, I don't want to sign Ryan Grace because I don't think he will improve our team. I know he scored a lot of goals last season, but I actually think Spencer Drury is better. And maybe he's an improvement on someone like Craig Palmer. But I don't want to waste all my money signing him. His contract might be running out, actually. No, he's got another year on it. Also have a look at average rating, assists. He's got the, I mean, Craig Palmer, of course. Joint top assist this season from his advanced forward role. The other guy, Pablo Gonzalez, who he came up against a few times this season. Burst an Albion play. He's on loan from Wolves, though. So perhaps we could get him on loan. But then again, there's no point. I'm not playing wingers. However, 
The other thing I think about at the end of the season is what formation, what tactics am I going to use next season? Because the 4-3-3, it was effective last season and getting us promoted. I changed it at the start of our eighth season, the one in League 2, which we, of course, were very successful because we managed to get promoted. A really good run towards the end of the season as well there. As you can see, lots of green dots in there because we we turned it on a lot in the last third of the season and managed to win the league. However, this season, it, it got off to a brilliant start and we exceeded all the expectations, of course. We're expected to finish bottom, according to the game. I don't think we, in terms of players that we have, we didn't deserve to finish bottom with what we have. And we, we did prove the media and the game wrong by finishing fifth in the league, of course. And it was a brilliant start to the season. We were top about a third of the way through the season work, we maybe even halfway through the season, I can't really remember exactly, but in fact, we can have a look. This will probably be a little bit of a, a rambling video, by the way. You know what I'm like sometimes when I'm just given free reign to just ramble and ramble on, and especially in this sort of video, but a lot of people have asked for this, and I just want to demonstrate an example of what I do in pre-season, really. It won't be for everyone. So we were top of the table, quite early on in the season and we dropped off we were sort of hanging around waiting for our moment to pounce again and you can see we, we did actually get back up to first place in match week 26 but that was the last time we were top of the table we soon dropped off and the last half of the season especially the last third of the season we did drop off quite a bit but the only time we were outside the playoffs was in week week five and that's early on in the table when early along in the season when everyone's very tight together so I was very proud that we stayed in the playoffs for pretty much the entirety of the season that is a pretty magnificent achievement but we did drop off towards the end of the season our league form we struggled to to convincingly win games we were very good in the checker trade trophy but once again we were relying on penalties rather than convincingly winning the games so what do I do? Do I tinker with the tactic? Do we leave it this way and just improve the team? And therefore, I will have the, a better better team next year that can use this tactic and go on to bigger and better things and hopefully get automatic promotion. Or do I just completely throw everything out the window and go with something different? I mean, we do have this option, which I've not used, but it's always been there in the background. We are familiar with it because we've been training up using it. We've also got the forever young wing back tactic, which we used for many years many years, I think about three seasons, and it was incredibly successful, but then started to be less successful. And I soon realized three at the back just wasn't working. We didn't really have the wing backs to to, to slot into that position. I, my players now, Stephen Dean, for example, don't think he can play wing back. He can play right back or right midfield, and he can sort of play wing back relatively well, but he'd much prefer to play as a standard full back other side of the pitch we have to decide what to do I have I put a poll up on episode 85 asking um, about what you would do with players like Greg Cross should I release him should I keep him my gut instinct is to let him go and bring in a different player but I will have a look at the results of that poll during this episode as we get to the time when the players contracts will be running out at the end of June I will be looking for a left back though because Yahya Yah, he's good when he's good he's really good like he did put in some very good performances for us, but 10 yellow cards in the league and two red cards, four red cards in all competitions, didn't actually get a yellow card in any other competitions. It, it was annoying. He got so many suspensions because of those red cards. Stephen Dean, on the other hand, I think he picked up one red card, but he got 16 yellow cards this season, which is just too high. And he did have a three-match suspension at the end of the season, of course, which was a problem going into the playoffs against Plymouth. My other mistake this season was to loan out Tim Green. He had a fabulous time at Dagenham and Redbridge. And long term, it might be good for him. He, he's improved as a player. He's had a fantastic season. Incredibly high average rating. Lots of man of the match awards, assists, goals. So he will come back to a stronger and better. And he will be back up for Stephen Dean next year. And I will keep him at the team. So long term, it was a good idea to loan him out. But short term, if we'd kept him, maybe we would be in the championship. Because he would have slotted in when Stephen Dean was suspended. And we might have beaten Plymouth and then gone off, to, or got, gone on to the playoff final. But it's all lifts and butts, isn't it? You don't know at the start of the season what's going to happen. But I do regret, short term, I regret loaning him out. But long term, I'm hoping I can benefit from that incredible season he had. 
albeit at a much lower level than League One. But he will come back and hopefully perform very well next season when required. So for now, I'm going to stick with this tactic, the Regen 433. But we'll have a think. I will have a think over the next month of pre-season as to what we do. Now, some of you guys have been asking, how do I find regens? Well, my top tip for those of you that I suppose are new to the game would be to go to this. So click on this little world button, click on world, go to transfers. And what you can do is press youth intake or youth de generally youth departures when you're at a lower level because you're going to be trying to pull in the players that have left their clubs. And what you can do is just click on the player, have a look at him and ask if he wants to sign for the club. Uh, actually, this guy's not bad. He's 18 years old. He doesn't look too bad, actually. That was just a random player I clicked on, but hmm, I can't. The one downside of being manager of Regen Rovers is that my scouting ra range is pretty bad. I can only scout the UK and Ireland. At the same time, I don't necessarily need to scout to find out their current attributes. It's more about the potential, because what I did at the start of the save, of course, I clicked Disa um, I click disable attribute masking if you play it I guess the proper way as some people would say uh, all these attributes we wouldn't be able to see we might be able to see about six different attributes of this player and you can make an educated guess to how good they are going to be and you need to properly scout the player to sign them because you need to find out the other attributes and find out some other details about them I don't need to do that because of course I've disabled the attribute masking and you might wonder why I did that, because it does essentially make it a little bit easier looking at players. Uh, I had to do it for Regen Rovers at the start of this save. I've already explained this, but if I hadn't disabled it, I'd have literally been able to see nothing about the likes of Jack Young. And I wouldn't have been able to sign anyone. I, I would have just been a wild guess at the start of the save who to sign, because I didn't have any scouts either. So we would have definitely got relegated in that first year, and the series would have been over before we even started the way I did it via the creator club mode of course so that's why I did it obviously long term it's make it will make it easier because I can see the attributes of these players but at the same time there's a lot of at the same times here I'm not actually looking this way for players exactly I am sort of manually looking at players uh, rather than looking at this big list here well I, I'm sort of using this list but for the UK and Ireland I'm You'll see it in a bit when, when all the UK and Ireland players get released. Uh, for example, these Scottish players. What I do is I hold down shift and, for example, go down to here. So I've selected all these players. And then if you just right click around about here, away from, on the date, you can then get a scout report for all these players. So I get a scout report. If the scout recommends him as being a decent player, then I look at the player profile. So that's I'm just making it a little bit more difficult for myself rather than just going down this whole list, clicking on every single player and automatically being able to see all their attributes straight away. However, if you want to do this, if you want to find the best regens, this is the method I would suggest because you can just go back in time and look at all the players that have been released. And if they don't have a club, you can sign them on a free. So they're usually players that they weren't good enough for this particular club. So if you find players released by Bayern Munich, for example, then you might find some decent players. Or you can look at youth intake. So you can see the players that have been taken in by their respective clubs. So in that month, they've been given youth contracts. So they're already on a contract. You might be able to sign them on a free and pay compensation to get them to your club. Or you might just have to bid for them. And it will be a small fee for players that play for less well-known teams of course if you went to Bayern Munich and looked in their youth team you're not going to be able to sign those players because they're going to be so expensive but if you go to I don't know this player Mert Yildrim you could probably sign him for yeah five maybe even nothing well 18k but still you, you get what I mean if you're at a big club that's that's nothing and you never know that player might develop into a decent player. And of course, if you've got scouts that can go all around the world, they'll be able to tell you the potential of these players. I can't scout these players. I can't tell what is their potential going to be. I can have a look at them and think they look decent. They've got decent attributes in the right places for that position. But you still don't know their hidden attributes and if they're going to, if they're a hard worker or if they're determined. Well, you can see that they're determined, but you can see their pros and cons within that personality, I guess if you're able to scout them anyway i am blabbering here when it gets to june i think all the players from 
English clubs will be released and then that's when I do my serious scouting. So I've had my scout reports back from these Scottish players and as you can see, none of them have been recommended to me by my scouts. My scouts could be wrong because they're not the best scouts in the world. I've got okay scouts. I've got the best scouts I possibly could find that are regens. Um, if we just go to my, my staff a second, look at the scouting team. My, my head scout, chief scout, has got 11 on ability, 14 on potential, which is not bad for League One for, for this level. And for me, regen rovers, when I can only sign regen staff members, remember. He's only 24 years old, this guy. Then we've got Liam Spencer, 20, he's 24 years old as well. He's actually better. He's, he certainly improved over the years. He wasn't that high before, but he's, he's actually a really good scout for me. 16 determination helps as well. 14 ability, 15 potential. He's better than my chief scout. Uh, but I signed this chief scout a while ago and he just wants to be chief scout now. Levy Wilson as well, 12 and 11. That's not too bad. And lastly, Nello Ferro, 9 and 12. Those are the best ones I could find at the time, but I might be able to find some new ones in the summer. I think I'm allowed some more scouts. I think I can, yeah, I can have three more scouts. But I've just not bothered because I can only scout the UK and Ireland. The board won't let me scout any further. If we just have a look. Yeah, uh, yeah. They, they, I can decrease my scouting range if I want. Why the hell would I want to do that? I suppose it saves money. Let's look at Kingstonian then, our uh, affiliate. If you do have an affiliate, definitely go and have a look at them every season just to see there's any young players that are decent worth picking up Ahmed Afalabi, the goalkeeper not going to be good enough Tony Peacock no there's probably no one at this stage but you never know they might randomly produce a world beating player and because I'm their affiliate the parent club I have I think first option on them to sign them Barry McShane cracking name great moustache I might just sign him for the moustache alone <laughs> although he's a striker and he's got five on composure and four off the ball, so he's never going to be good enough. This guy, Sean Parkinson, he's okay. He's 22 years old. He's okay. It would have been good enough when I was in the National League. And the under-18s, they do have some players here. But I don't think... I think it's basically the same as my my under-18s. They've not produced anyone. Maybe one day. Cool, he's, he's had a tough life already. He's only 17. He looks about 78. What I could do one day is I could live stream pre-season... I'm not doing it this time around. Uh, first of all, I wanted to get your opinions on that, but also it doesn't quite line up with my weekly schedule. I don't really have the time to live stream. I, I generally record videos either in the morning before I start work, because I work from home, so I'm able to do that, or lunchtime, because I work from home and I'm able to do that, and then I will edit either in the morning or sort of early evening. And then, of course, I want to spend time with my wife. And I do things in the evening. So I do have some sort of life. Not much of a life, but I have a little bit of a life. So streaming at the moment is not quite possible. But perhaps I could fit in a, a pre-season stream at some point. We'll see. I'll let you know if my situation changes, I guess. But you can kind of treat this as a live stream, but without the sort of live interaction. Because it's just going to be me going through pre-season. I will edit bits out, but there will, it will be a longish video. See, now the clubs in England have released their players. So it is the end of May that they release their players. Now, first of all, these are the key ones, the best ones. So I, I will scout these guys. I could look at them individually, but I can't really be bothered. And they're probably players I won't be able to sign because they're from the real top teams. But you can see that all these players have been released. Youth players have been released. And they're, of course, all regens at this stage because they're all... Every player under the age of 23 or 24 in this game now will be a regen. And then... What I do is I just highlight a lot of, of players and I get my scouts to go out and just have a quick look at them. Just a scout report. That's all I need at this stage. If I want any other scouting, then we can do that. You can't highlight every single player in one go because there is a maximum, I think. So I don't I don't always do every single player. I mean, if I had... I, I occasionally will look through and look at the bigger teams and not bother with the smaller ones. Um... But I'm, I'm being lazy right now and just highlighting as many as I can, really. And then over the coming weeks, I will get these scout reports. It will take a hell of a long time for the players to come in because I'm scouting loads and loads of players and I've only got four scouts. So this is one of the, the key players that was released by Man City. So we have to have a look at him. You might think, well, three and a half stars, got to sign him. He's got four star potential. But you have to have a look. Does he fit into my team? No, he's a winger. I don't play wingers. 
perhaps I should sign one anyway, just in case I do decide to play wingers. That is always in the back of my mind. Maybe I should have wingers in the squad just in case. But then if I don't play wingers, they're going to be wasted. They won't play any games. And I've, and sometimes wingers will sort of command a bigger wage because they're the creative players. They create the goal and they can get the money. Of course, strikers do as well. But, but you know what I mean. Like if I was to sign this guy, he would want me to like he wants to treat the club as a stepping stone stone i'm just gonna see in fact he wants another promise added so i'd have to maybe improve the training facilities or something but he doesn't want that <laughs> improve the coaching team and then finalize promises and then you can offer him a contract i won't sign this guy because i don't see the point but i'm just demonstrating for you uh, Anthony Wesley, now central midfield. We can always do with a central midfielder. Deep line playmaker as well would fit into our system at the moment. He looks all right, but you have to make sure you look at the cons, don't you? Could do with a, a better heading attribute. I don't see that as necessary, to be honest. He's well suited for National League football. So we're in League One. He's apparently two divisions below what our, ability, our level is. At the same time, though, remember, most of my squad is at that level. So it, he wouldn't really be out of place. And he needs to be more consistent. And consistency is key. I've probably got quite a few players that aren't consistent enough. Maybe Guillermo Diaz is the same. Yeah, there's, I mean, fairly inconsistent, susceptible to injuries, one-footed. There's a lot of cons for Diaz, which is a little bit of a problem. So if we can improve upon him, then great. Mm, I don't think he's going to improve the team. Where did he play? Arsenal. Well, let's see how much he wants. Nick Austin in goal, 15 reflexes. Started at Tottenham. The other thing I do is compare. Of course, he's only 18, and he could turn into a really good goalkeeper, according to my scout, whoever scouted him. But if we compare him against our best goalkeeper, how is he different? Now, you can look at this thing. I don't really look at these, what's it, uh, octogram, octagon thing. I prefer to look at the actual attributes, and, and then you can highlight it for the goalkeeper and you can see that he's actually better at a couple of things he's better at communication he's got one better on reflexes but things like handling he's a lot worse at kicking and one-on-one slightly worse tendency to punch is lower that's it's not always a good thing having a tendency to punch if you're not very good in the air but Fukuchar has good aerial reach although his command of area isn't the best I think Fukuchar well obviously is the better goalkeeper at the moment Nick Austin could grow into being a good one it's kind of worth a punt and just putting him in the youth team for now. He obviously wants quite a bit of money. But if we just give him a year contract and see how he develops over the next year, if he doesn't develop, then we get rid. If he does, then we give him another contract. That's my theory anyway. What we could do is give him give him that. And, ah, right, that's saving some money. Not that he's really going to make any appearances. John Hawkins, another central midfielder. Passing 10. I like a midfielder that can pass. So he's, he's a sort of set-piece specialist. He's quite aggressive. We don't need another aggressive player in our team. It's too many. Dan Castle has real potential, apparently, but no. don't. I can already see how he's not going to be good enough. He's obviously determined, t good teamwork, and he's fast. But I like a striker that can finish, has good composure, good off-the-ball anticipation. He doesn't have that. He's not going to improve all of those in a, in a few years, is he? Another key thing is to look at the name. <laughs> I like a good name. Diego Bartolome. Yeah, exotic. But I don't think he's going to add to the team. Oh, how? Stuart Howe. This, he looks tasty. And I'm not just talking about his moustache. He's wanted by 34 clubs. Blimey, look at that. Well, he's not going to come to us, is he? But it just proves that he's a good player because there's so many clubs interested in him. You can tell that he's already a good player. If we just look at his quick scouting report, he's got no intention of joining us. He started at Man United and they've released him. Now, he would be better than Danny Bai. He'd come into the team and probably be a direct replacement for Danny Bai, an improvement on Danny Bai and slot in alongside Reese Walker. Probably not going to want to sign for us anyway. Nope, because we're not big enough. So it's the, I have a look at all these players and then suddenly I actually try and give them a contract and they don't want one. Hmm, Matt Barnard. I like the look of him, actually. 15 vision, 15 work rate, good passing, determined, physically very good, wanted by a few clubs. I actually like the look of this guy. I think he could be good. I'm happy for players to, to say, well, I treat the club as a stepping stone because we could sell them on for big money, of course. So Anthony Wesley, the first guy we looked at, central midfielder, decent player. How much would he want? So if we just 
cheekily give him that to start with and just see see 2k a week it's just way too much for us lewis cox the the winger we're just once again see how much 7k bloody hell well, that's why you've been released you're just wanting way too much money at a young age matt barnard then so he's probably going to be the same let's start off with a solid 500 quid 4.8k a week so, come on matt i know afc filed were paying like five grand a week to someone in the national league but this is regen rovers you're coming to rygate not to barcelona so these are the few players and staff that are having their contract run out. We do need to give Liam Spencer a new deal, actually, because he is our best scout by quite a distance. But he doesn't want a huge amount of money, and we're going to give him as big a contract as possible. £450 a week, two-year contract, that's the maximum I can do. And he's happy with that, so that's that's pleasing. Nello Ferro. Now, he's not the best scout in the world, I know. In fact, we could have made Liam Spencer our head chief scout, because Victor Akafor is leaving. Nello Ferro, hmm, he's adaptable. I don't think I'm going to give him a new contract, but Victor Akafor, will he accept just being a normal scout, do you think? Not a coach, a scout, Paul, a scout. He wants to be chief scout and that's it. Now, what I will do is we'll have a look to see if there's any better scouts out there. So staff search, we'll look for a, for a scout. Now, the unique ID, this is how I look for regions in, using the, the search option. There's a type of ID that is for regens only. It starts with 13948. If that's the start, it's also quite a long number as well. So you only want to look for those. There might be a way to just search for people with the unique ID 13948. I'm not 100% sure. Anyway, next up, what we'll do is, is look at mental attributes. Look for judging player, uh, player potential and ability. And we'll go back to put in the unique ID thing and what I do is I basically will go down the list there might be a quick way to do this I don't know but go down the list and look for the unique ID and the best scout possible really I also generally look for unemployed ones because they will be cheaper we, we can't get scouts that are at Real Madrid because they're not going to come to Regen Rovers so generally I would look for unemployed ones but if we if there's a little bit of compensation compensation to be paid I'm not too too bothered for example tom stevens at millwall if we could get him to come that'd be great but he doesn't want to come so first of all look for scouts with clubs look for the best option if the compensation isn't too high then that's fair enough if i can't find anyone then we have to go for the unemployed route there is quite a few out there but most of them aren't very good so if we just go down the best one at the moment there's two, two actually. This is the best one. Khalid Hilton has 14 on ability and 13 on potential. Now, he is a much better option, but he doesn't want to come. And the other option is Vasco Chinia, who I think would just be a normal scout rather than a chief scout. And I think he'll replace Nello Ferro. Nello Ferro is a great name, though, doesn't he? So he's the best one out there. And it really is about potential that I really want, because I can look at the current ability of a player from their attributes anyway. So... Uh... Should we give him a two-year contract? Yeah. I mean, the likelihood of finding a better scout in that time is unlikely. But I think we're going to have to rely on our friend Victor Okafor to be chief scout at the moment because there's no one else better than him at this present moment in time. Head of sports science. I'm not... I think fitness is the, the, the thing you need for this. And this was the best guy I could find last year. I, To be honest, I doubt there's anyone better. Head of sports science... Look for coaching attributes, look for fitness, unique ID. The best one. Oh, there is, there's a couple better guys out there now. Carlos Francis. I think it's fitness that we need. The thing is, we can't sign him yet because he hasn't left. And I don't really want to terminate his contract yet and pay a bit of money to him. So we'll wait till he's gone. I will have a quick look to find out if it is fitness that is the good thing for the head of sports science. The players as well, I need to decide whether to keep them or not. So I will be looking at the uh, the poll to decide. Man United have just won the FA Cup for the first time on this save. In fact, Southampton have lost two finals in a row. Unlucky. Oh, bloody hell. Why is he stalking me, this guy? Paul Mullen, he keeps appearing. He's destroyed me multiple times already. Go away. Now, this guy would be good at left back, according to my scouts. 
mentally he's strong good concentration which is always a tough attribute to find in, de in lower league defenders I think that's what separates the best from the rest I think a good concentration attribute goes a long way to being a good defender he's also good at teamwork leadership work rate but technically he's poor he's got nothing above a nine physically he's pretty sound though really good stamina and actual fitness and everything else is at least a 10 but his technical attributes let him down so I don't think I'd want him in my team. So yeah, you get all these scout reports come in, millions of them, and I just have to skip through the majority of them. There's no point even looking at them if, you know, the potential's below three stars, probably. Gavin Ewan, Iron, Ewan, Ewan, something like that. He looks okay. Possible plays, 20 years old. No, too aggressive. I've, I've got enough aggressive players in my team. This guy looks all right. Louis Shepard, 21-year-old poacher. Don't think he's going to be as good as what we have, though, so there's probably not much point signing him. So financially, at the moment, we're in we're in a strong position. 700k. It's dropped off a bit from the review episode, which was up to like 800 and something, but it's still very strong. We're still repaying a lot of loans, but things are looking all right. They're looking relatively healthy. So we're about to sign Nick Austin, this goalkeeper. Now, the, I do think... It's a good idea to sign an 18-year-old goalkeeper because, of course, we have two good goalkeepers in Lisa Zellis, our Checker Trade Trophy Cup hero. I don't think he's going to improve much after this point. He's 25. He's still young for a goalkeeper. I can't imagine him improving a huge amount. Apparently, he'll be a leading player for National League North and South sides, which is what he was when we were at that level and in the National League as well. Furt Kachar is the one we really can have high hopes for. He's apparently already a good player for most League 2 sides. So, hopefully, has the potential to be a League 1 player. Everything's going up as well, and it continues to increase, which is brilliant to see. But other than those two goalkeepers, we've got... Uh, that's it, in fact. That's Where's... We've got Danny Rolls, a young goalkeeper. But that literally... Oh, and Grant Hunter, who's not going to be good enough. I probably will release this summer and replace him with Nick Austin, who has better current ability than him already and has the potential to be better he's already well suited to national league north south football he's not much behind Lee of zealous in that regards and he's got potential to be a championship goalkeeper if we can get him on the right track he obviously had problems with spurs they didn't think he was good enough maybe because he's only good enough for the championship that's why they got rid of him so let's get him let's give him an opportunity and there we go the transfer will go through in a week's time i guess when the transfer window opens and i'll put him into the end of 23s he's earning quite a bit of money to be an under 23 third choice goalkeeper but i think it's worth it and we can afford it now we are paying much bigger wages we're still seventeen thousand pounds behind our wage budget and you know if i really wanted to i could increase it to 46 grand or we can increase the transfer budget to 1.2 million pounds if we really wanted to but we won't. Ball confidence update? Of course. They are happy. And there's our financial update for the latest month. And here in comes Vasco Chinia. A scout, of course. £425 a week. That's all right. An Italian scout. He's adaptable. He's got good knowledge of Italy, which we can't scout in at the moment. But he's going to have to adapt to England. And I'm sure he can because of his good adaptability. And then with this new scout, we're going to send him on an intensive language course, which will cost a bit of money. But at the same time, we can sort out an assignment for him. So I don't know if you're good at using these sort of things. Um, I might be speaking to the converted already, the guys that already know how to play this game. With this guy, I'm going to... He's good at... I think he had good youth, working with youth. I don't know if that has an impact on him finding young players. We could even make him report on a competition. Report on the English Championship, which is a level above, but get us used to that level. And look for players at least with a current ability of one star, but have the potential to be at least three stars. And look for players. I mean, I could do a, an age thing, but let's just look generally. In fact, we could, we might as well look for players at, under 26, because that's the maximum age a regen can be at the moment is 26. You do get the odd regen appear that is a bit older when squads are trying to be filled up by the game. But we go with that. Of course, we can add another another one as well. We could just look for a hot prospect. Any position, just get him to go out and scout hot prospects with at least three and a half star potential. Could look for a specific player and we'll go for 15 to 18 year olds. I won't go for a specific position, we'll just go for any old player. This guy's an epic moustache. I think we need to sign him just for that reason. Connor O'Hara, Republic of Ireland. 
wanted by a few Irish clubs. He's just average at everything. Another player I just don't think will ever be good enough. And by the time he's got to a certain level, will be in the division above anyway. Apparently he played a couple of games at championship level last year, but I don't know why, because he just he doesn't look good enough. Another thing to do, other, other than just looking at the statistics of our league, of course, is look at the League 2 level. Is there someone that can step up to the next level? Ellis Bartley, for example, although he's coming up with Portsmouth, so he's not likely to leave, but he looks like a very good player. Maybe this guy, Jabia Sirugul. Spaniard, central midfielder. He looks all right, actually. He's quite average at most things, but physically, he's very good. We will scout him just to get the opinion of our scouts. Or maybe even the even the level below. National League, Kevin Monday. Striker for, for Cheltenham on loan from Brighton. 19 years old, looks okay. I don't think we need strikers, though. I think what I... I need to do is look at the team. What positions do we need to improve? Fullbacks. Well, left back in particular. I think fullback, right fullback guys were, were fine. Stephen Dean is quality, and Tim Green is a good backup. Left back, though, we probably need two left backs. If I'm going to let, let Greg Cross go and Yaha Yaha is going back to Blackburn, I think I need two left backs to come in. Central midfield. If I can find an improvement, I will, because we're not, we weren't particularly strong in central midfield last year. Question is, what's going to happen to Mohamed Gar Garber? Is he going to go back to Brentford? Are they going to give him a new contract? Because they haven't yet. Perhaps we will have to sign him on a free. Um, I think there's a way of selling off his uh, sell-on fee. So if it gets to the end of June and they haven't given him a new contract, there might be a way to do it. I think you can, I'm, just, I'm sure there's a way to do it somewhere. Players like Marlowe, we need to decide whether to give him a new contract or not he's been a solid servant over the years Diaz was okay last year but not amazing 6.87 average rating isn't that great same with the likes of Paddy Murray uh, Patrick Dibber was good again 6.96 he doesn't look like he should be amazing but he does put in good performances you can see all these mental attributes the sort of bottom half of the mental attributes he's, he's strong at he's physically strong as well uh, strength wise stamina wise natural fitness balance good decent passer of the ball but other technical attributes he's not so good at. And up front, I don't think we do need to improve exactly. Um, or we don't need more strength and depth because we've got so many strikers. Oh, I found a decent right back. Well, he's got good potential anyway. Hmm. I don't know. Where did he? Arsenal. Hmm. Maybe. He's 18. He's going to be 19 in October. So wouldn't want very much in, in terms of wages. Could be we trained as a defensive midfielder. Yeah, I can see why. Marking and tackling are nine, and they could be improved upon. Physically, is decent. I don't know. I mean, you have to take a risk with some players, because we don't have many young players now, do we? And the ones we do have don't really have great potential. So perhaps I do need to take a risk with some players. Lee Lovegrove. An alliterative name. Gotta love an alliterative name. Let's see. If if he's willing to come for £160 a week, we'll give him a season. See if he makes any progress in the under-23s. And then take it from there. He wants £250 a week. Uh, let's just whittle him down. 220 Okay. You have to take a risk with some players. Potential to be a decent League One right back. You know, even if he doesn't turn into a decent player, maybe we could sell him for ten grand or something and make a little bit of profit. Stephen Dean's been called up by Northern Ireland again. Well done to him. We've also got Eamon Lynch, Colin McGuigan and Neil Dixon all in the under-21 team. And Jonathan Edwards in the Welsh under-21 team. Uh, Okafel has accepted a new deal. As has Liam Spencer, which is really good because he's a quality scout. Let's have a little chat about Jack Young then. Absolute legend of the series. But I know I completely cocked up in that first leg of the the semi-final against Plymouth. It, it was the wrong decision to put him up front. And I know I've got a lot of stick from you guys. Deserved stick, to be honest, in the comment section for putting Jack Young in. Now, my reasons for that was in the previous game against Shrewsbury in the last day of the season, he had a fantastic game, got an assist, looked good, and didn't seem to be out of his depth in a way and I thought if I don't play him in the next game I'm going to have a few people who absolutely adore Jack Young putting in the comment section below Jack Young had a brilliant game against Shrewsbury what has he done to to lose his place in the playoffs there's a few people out there that love Jack Young and think he's the best player at this, the, the club the best striker should be our number one striker 
Uh, one guy in particular, you know who you are, <laughs> berates me on Twitter about this regularly, saying Jack Young should be... I don't know if you're just playing along. I, I think you're being serious about this. But you actually are convinced that Jack Young's the best striker. He clearly isn't. I know you, the guy who I'm talking about, uh, believes that attributes do not play a massive part in a player, how good a player is on this game. It, sorry, you're wrong. There are other things that make a good player. For, for example, the behind-the-scenes attributes, such as consistency, important matches, versatility, a few other things, personality traits. Morale is also a huge part of football manager these days. Jack Young generally has a very good happiness rating on the game. And form, as well, has a big part. But attributes is the main thing that makes a good player on Football Manager. You look at the best players on the game, Messi, Ronaldo, etc. They all have incredible attributes. That's why they are good on the game. Unfortunately, Jack Young just doesn't have the attributes to play at League One. He's coming up against defenders that are just too good for him. Or goalkeepers that are too good for him. So they're... <laughs> That's why he hasn't scored for 17-odd games on this in this series. So it was the wrong decision to put him, him in. I apologise for that. I did throw away that game. It wasn't his fault exactly that we lost 3-0 against Plymouth. It was mainly the defence and, and the defensive problems, injuries, suspensions that I had. And my decision to play players out of position, I guess. And that was the main problem. But Jack Young did have a part to play in that first game. He didn't play well enough. And I know a lot of you got annoyed about that. So I'd, I am sorry. The poll that I put up a few days ago does agree with my approach, though. If I just show you the results a second, you can see what would you do with Jack Young? This was the question asked. And 56% of your 192 votes for sub bench slash play occasionally. That's what I'd do. That's my approach. I'm going, going forwards. We'll have him on the bench. If we're 3 0 up, I'll throw him on, see if he can get a goal. He deserves that, I think, for his... He's the mo historically the most important player at the club, isn't he? Uh, the next bunch of you think stick him in the, on the 23s. There's actually more of you that believe we should release him than put him in the starting lineup. So you have to... Those of you that really have been overly nostalgic and believe Jack Young should be our, our number one striker, there's not many of you. So sorry to disappoint you, but... We cannot have him as our main striker. He just isn't good enough. He really isn't. And I'm. it breaks my heart to say that because I love him. And he's served as well over the years. But from now on, he's going to have to be... And he, he has been the last two seasons, to be fair. He's going to have to be a backup. And he'll come off the bench occasionally. Maybe I'll start him in the Checker Trade Trophy or, or something like that. But that's it for now, I'm afraid. Found a decent left back. Jacob Kettle, who used to play for Arsenal... And apparently he has a very good current ability already, according to my scout. The same as Mohamed Yahya. He's less aggressive and he's got potential to be a decent player. He's only 18 years old, but he's wanted by 27 clubs. So I doubt, yeah, he's not going to want to sign for me. So that's the annoying thing. I'm finding these players that are definitely good enough for us at League One. But there's going to be probably championship clubs going for him. Don't seem to have any problem finding OK right back, though. That's, that's annoying. Anyway, back onto the scouting scene. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look for players that are going to have their contract expiring within the next month. That's the best thing to do. Obviously, we can't go for these, <laughs> but this player, £15.25 million pounds worth of player. But perhaps these players are a bit further down the list. These are all strikers, of course, I'm looking at the moment. I want to look for a left back. In That's the priority, I think, this year. Left back, find someone that's going to be good enough. We will scout them. Obviously, I can see from the attributes if they're good enough. Another Northern, Northern Irish player. So he's having his contract expire soon. And when it does expire, it's someone to go for because he's he'd certainly be good enough for us at our level. Oliver Hawkins, Norwich under 23s player. Definitely a possibility. Hmm. Carlos Dunleavy. Good potential. He's only 18 years old. Wanted by Portsmouth. Started at Manchester United. Got some good mentals, a bit aggressive again for my liking. Yeah, one to look, watch out for. I mean, there's so many, I mean, because I'm scouting all these players, there's just so many average players in here that are never going to be good enough. But this is my approach. Oh, Jimmy Stevens, left back, looks decent. Markings a bit low, but looks like a decent all-rounder. Decent, 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 that's, that's the word of the day. He started at Man United as well. I like the look of him, not just because of his star ability that's going back from my assistant but is there's some there's something there he's a decent all-rounder decent once again he wants to treat the club as a stepping stone i'm 
I'm okay with that. Just to try and get a player in, I'll say anything, to be honest. Lee Lovegrove has decided to sign for us, so that's good. 18-year-old right back, obviously could do with a left back, but he's going to be a player that will go straight to the under-23s, and he's a hot prospect. He's not going to dislodge Stephen Dean. He's probably not even going to dislodge Tim Green as second choice for now, but it's one for the future. We need to think about the future, don't we? Okay, so Stevens, Jimmy Stevens. How much are you going to want? I'm guessing you're going to want quite a bit. We'll start off with a, around £800. And let's just see. What's a lot of money? Is he really good enough to be our, our most expensive player at the club? He's got the potential to be a championship left back, but he's not actually better than what we have already. Can he really? It's because he, start, he was at Man United. He was probably earning like 5 k a week. In his first professional contract or something if he if he actually had one but to get 1.9k a week that's just do we have i don't think we have anyone earning a grand a week yet it will be soon i'm sure but if we increase the appearance fee or something and maybe clean sheet bonus drag it below 1k give him a, a yearly wage rise of 20 percent then offer that no that's screwed him over <laughs> sorry you definitely get players getting a bit more pissed off with you on the, the newer football managers compared to the old days when you're doing these negotiations. Hmm, this guy doesn't look too bad actually. Central midfielder, John Kerry, started at Man City, so he's going to want a lot of money as well. I don't want these players from big teams, I just want too much money. But he's a he's a good all-rounded, passing's a bit low for my liking in central midfield. But he offers other attributes, quite good mentals, physically pretty good. Let's just see how much he would want because... We do need some midfielders, and I'm thinking about changing the formation or having as a backup an option where we have two strikers with a defensive midfielder. So maybe I should change this one to how I want it to be. So pull this guy back. I want Dibba to play in the middle as a box-to-box -box midfielder. And then on the right-hand side, we'd have an advanced playmaker on attack and a deep-line playmaker Perhaps on support. That might unbalance the midfield a little bit. I don't know. And then a, a, just a standard defensive midfielder in there. Holding the team together. Just anchoring us together, I guess. And, yeah, just keeping it really simple. As simple as possible. Maybe retain possession. Go through the middle. Exploit the middle. Rather than... I mean, we, we can't exploit the flanks. We don't have any wingers. I could completely throw everything out the window. Bring some wingers into the team and change the formation. But I don't know if that's going to work at the moment. I've not had, well I've not really played football manager outside of this save this year, apart from the, the Liverpool one right at the start that broke of course. But wingers, I, some football managers, the only tactics I can get to work are, are winger, winger tactics and on other football managers it's the opposite. I can't get wingers to work. I just don't know why. It just seems to be the way it is for me. But we'd, we'd be more disciplined in this tactic and just play it through the middle so I'm going to stick that in there. It's still reasonably familiar with what we're used to, but I'd like to stick with the three up front because we're just such a threat going forward with three up front. But if we need to play it simple, have more defensive stability, we could try this, I guess. We've got that option there. It's not too different from our usual formation as well. Okay, John Kerry, how much do you want? Let's just offer you 900 quid to start with. See what you say. Ah, too much. Bye. I just don't want to give all my money away right now. If there's one player earning a huge amount more than the rest of the squad, then that's just going to be a bit problematic. I don't know who is the highest earner. Andy, wow, well, actually, Reese Walker's earning over a thousand pound a week. That's fair enough. So I can offer that much. Andy Moran is uh, on loan, of course. He's actually earning a huge amount at Preston, and I did agree to play those pay those wages for the the last half of the season, which was a bit stupid because he's not been good enough at all. But how was I to know that? I thought he might be a useful player for us. So I'm okay, I'm willing to pay over a thousand pound for the right player. Reese Walker's been here a long time, as he's progressed obviously has earned more money so we've got two players coming in today as it's the the 10th of june we've got lee lovegrove who goes straight into the under 23s we want to work on something for him well just his all-round defensive attributes being like just just train it up train him up train him up as a, a traditional fullback tutoring uh, we can't until the holiday is over, but I would like to get Stephen Dean to tutor him, ideally. The other player coming in is Nick Austin, who goes straight into the under-23s as well. Something we could train up for him, probably handling 
I would say, is uh, a key thing there. He's only got 10 on that. We will focus on training, obviously, when they're back from holiday. But what I would do to start with, I, get, I, I don't know if this is the right approach, but this is what I do. I generally put it on high fitness to start with and tactics for match preparation so they get used to the tactics completely match familiarity a tactic familiarity is up as high as possible for the start of the season fitness towards the start of pre-season just to get them back into the this is what i would do how i expect clubs work you know you build up the match fitness after they come back with their holiday whale blub around their belly and get them back sharp ready for matches obviously you then play quite a few friendlies to get them completely match sharp as well and then I start to focus on a few other things. Eventually, at, at the start of the season, I will put it generally on balanced and just average intensity because I don't want them getting too knackered. Andy Moran's going. Thank goodness for that. Can I... Oh, I can terminate. Let's terminate early and save a bit of money. I should have done that a couple of weeks ago. Save a bit of money. He's been useless. Mohamed Garba, what do we do about him? Is he going to be offered a new contract? It doesn't look like it, does it? So... Is it, isn't there a way to pay off or get some money from his, his old deal? Ah, here's the clauses. Okay, Mohamed Garba. They're, they're, I remember that sometimes the board would be able to negotiate a deal. But I'm guessing there isn't one here. So we can't buy off the deal. I swear it was here. where like so There'd be a button or an option to click on where you could get some money if I buying off, by buying off a clause or something like that. Like if they if they wanted they want 190k for him if I was to buy him and then a percentage of next sale which doesn't make any sense like if I bought him would I get half the money now would I get like 80 on k because so it would actually be half that value because 50 percent of the sell on fee would go back to me I, I don't know is that how it works there's no point buying him we'll wait till the end of his deal yeah he yeah. is has he got a new contract no so Cristiano Ronaldo's been watching him obviously doesn't think he's good enough. To give him a new contract yet. Luke Holland is someone I would like to sign. He's improved immeasurably over the season. And his contract's up very soon. So I would I would really like to sign him. Because although he didn't have the best season with us, and he was a bit part player, came off the bench a few times. I, I can see him being a quality player in the future. Really looking forward to seeing Colin McGuigan playing next season. I've got high hopes for him. I've mentioned it a couple of times already, but I really think he can produce in league one i know he scored goals only in northern ireland it's not the best quality league in the world but still to score 23 goals in any at any level in any season is is decent i think he can really add to our team sky bet league one season draws near oh exciting stuff eh so you can see portsmouth newport county wimbledon and chesterfield Along with the relegated teams from the Championship, Middlesbrough, Brentford and Preston North End are the seven new teams in this division. I'm kind of excited for this uh, for this next season. Well, I'm really excited actually because I've got high hopes. I think we can get to the playoffs again. I see no reason not to improve upon last season. Anyway, you'll see here I've, behind the scenes I've found a, another player to sign. Carlos Vidia or Vedia. He's Spanish. He used to play for Everton though. I can only really look at players that used to play for English teams. Um, of course, Diaz did actually come from a Spanish team, so there is the odd exception. But Carlos Fidia, he looks okay. Nothing amazingly special about him, but I'm going to try him out in the under-23s this season. He's 18, going on 19 in September. He's got some potential, according to my scouts. Currently, only really has the potential to be a League 2 player at the moment, apparently, in the future. Uh, which isn't obviously good enough. We're, <laughs> we're a League 1 team already. But we'll see how he progresses. It's... I can buy players to try and make a profit. I'm only giving him a year contract, but perhaps I could give him uh, another two years after that if he does okay in the under-23s and then sell him on. That is an option. So welcome to the club, Carlos. Ah, my scout must have got that wrong. Although my assistant could be wrong, of course, as well. He, apparently my assistant only thinks he's got two-star potential. He's at the same level as JJ and Chris Holmes at the moment. Not as good as our other young centre-back, Eamon Lynch, who... Ah, things are going up, things are going down. He's got some decent attributes in there that really stand out, but there's a few others that are very weak. So I don't know, he probably won't be good enough for the first team. Apparently he does have the potential to be a League One team at some point. Anyway, video goes into the under-23s. It's good to have some strength and depth, really, at that level. We want to be winning games at under-23 level. We didn't actually 
win the league this year uh, for the second time in a row. Wimbledon managed to win it. We finished third, which is still impressive. We've only lost four games all season. Joe Mohammed, second top goal scorer at this level as well. And uh, he actually got the highest average rating. Fortunately, Jack Young didn't have as good a season in the under-23s this year. Still pretty good, 10 goals, 10 assists. But Brady Chick was much better. And Bradley Berry also did very, very well. Uh, Joe Mohammed is not showing all his goals here because remember he did go out on loan and that kind of reset his uh, appearances back down to zero for some reason when he did come back. There's options everywhere. It's just, you have to take a punt. I mean, a lot of people have asked me, how did I find players at the start? It really was just pot luck. I had a look and I had a, I, I looked at the attributes to see which ones stood out for me. For example, for this guy, John, Johnson Wing Cup, central midfielder, good technique. Physically pretty good, but passing and vision not up to the standards I would like from someone like a deep line playmaker, in my opinion. He does have potential to be a League One player. I'm kind of, I could give him, you know, if, if he's treating the club as a stepping stone and I don't think he's actually that great, then I don't think it's worth signing him. But for players like Jack Young, who obviously hasn't progressed as a player mainly because in the early days we were a semi professional club, I think. But he scored goals for us because of that high finishing attribute when he first came to the club. I think he had 11, which was the highest I could find out of any player. It's so tough doing this, honestly. I know people that have tried this. And if you use the creator club method from the start, exactly the same way I did it, it's a very tough way to do this. It would be much easier creating your own club on the pre-game editor. You can give your club money, I suppose, if you really want. And... Um, it, it would give you at the start an empty club. It would give you players that are current, that are actually good enough for that level. The way I did it, I get, got rid of all the players. We were playing in the National League South with players that were only really good enough for regional football. They weren't good enough for the National League South, but somehow we survived. Probably because the players I did sign had key attributes, and I just got them to do their jobs. So we had Dion Mills who could pass in the middle of the pitch. Just doing the passing job, passing it to Jack Young up front. We had Gareth Sheriff, who was okay at, I suppose, tackling. Not the greatest, but he could do that defensive midfield job to a reasonable degree. He had 11 on tackling, which was the best we had at the time. So I just put the players in the positions that suited them best. And we somehow scrabbled together enough points on the last day of the season to just about survive. So that's how I do it, and that's what I still do now. It's, it's kind of... Do I trust the potential that my scout's given them? But if I look at their key attributes, do I think there's enough decent attributes in a certain positional role? So for this goalkeeper, I don't think he's going to be good enough. His handling's too poor. Kicking, communication, command of area. I think his reflexes and agility are very good, but there's too many weak attributes that I don't think will build up. Or I don't think I can build them all up to the correct level. So that's what I tend to do when I look at a player. And the other player I've been looking at behind the scenes is someone called Johnny Collins, defensive midfielder. He's okay, he's 19 years old, wants a reasonable amount of money to sign for us. Good teamwork, work rate, which fits in with a defensive midfielder. Now, if we are going to be using this tactic from time to time, we need a decent defensive midfielder in there. In the under-23s, we do have someone called Neil Dixon, who I signed last year, who's improving brilliantly and has the potential to be a championship midfielder in the future. He's been on loan at Braintree this past half a season I think played nearly every game for them okay average racing five assists six in all competitions and a goal I, th I like the look at him he could be our main defense midfielder next season if we do go with that formation but we need someone else I guess to cover as well so I think Johnny Collins he's only 19 he's got potential to be a league one defense midfielder in the future so making another punt just a wild not a wild guess, hoping that it'll be good enough, but it's it's a bit of a risk. You're paying out a bit of money every week, £450 a week for him, I think. And he might not be good enough, but it's only a year contract. So there's not a huge amount of risk there. So he's come into the team. I'll get by to have a chat with him. Just welcome him to the club. £450 a week, yeah, just for one year. We'll see how he progresses. Keep him in the under-23s just for the time being. And then maybe push him into the first team. So you may be wondering how I found them. It literally was that approach that I had, I did a few minutes ago, where we just scouted all those players that were released at youth level. Go to world, go to transfers. And we looked at all the players that were released in June. And I just, was it June? No, May, sorry. 
and scouted them. And the scout reports came back and they, they stood out. So that's that's all I did. That's generally how I find my players, really. Looking at youth departures from English teams, generally, maybe Scottish and Irish and the, the teams I can can scout. Charlie Rogers Denham, right-handed side, right-sided handed, right-handed, right-handed. He might be right-handed, right-footed. And he's a right midfielder. Aggression 19, that, that's not good. So... When he's got high aggression, but other things aren't that great, then I, I try not to. I, I like to avoid those players, I suppose. Also, he doesn't fit into my formation, but then again, if I'm going to be looking for other tactics at some point, maybe I will need to sign some wingers for the future. So, we really need to make a decision about these contracts now. So, I'm going to look at the polls that I set up in episode 25. Now, I do believe a couple of players you have decided. I should try and keep. There was a couple of players like Gareth Sheriff and Sean Hal Halcroft I also did. So, unfortunately for, for Sean Halcroft, 80, no, 90% of the people that voted on that poll decided that Halcroft should be released. At one point, a lot of you actually liked him. He was a great player for the first two seasons for us, particularly that second season, that, that promotion season from National League South when we were playing wing-backs and he moved over to the right-hand side. He was all right at National League level in that first season, but not amazing. And he did some stupid things towards the end of the season that well, I decided basically to drop him. And he was only a bit part player in that fourth year of us. And since then, he's been in the under 23s, but it is time to let him go. We're releasing him on a free. And unfortunately, Gareth Sheriff. It's the last time we're going to see him, I'm afraid, because 77% of you decided that he should be released so he was a great servant to us in that first three seasons in fact the first season uh, it was actually this the fourth season when we got promoted that was the season he, he just wasn't really part of the team I think we changed the formation a bit then we're still following him he will retire he's not good enough to find a club unfortunately Greg Cross then let's have a look I'm just loading it up oh 54% say release and yeah so it's incredibly close some of you do actually believe we should keep hold of greg cross but my instinct is to let him go simply because i don't think he's gonna be good enough at this level if we look at him here he's got the potential to be a decent league two left back not he's currently good enough he's actually only good enough decent not exceptional a decent player for national league sides Technically, I don't think he's particularly good. Physically, he's very good. Mentally, he's all right. But he just gets so many yellow cards. I'm going to... We're going to set him for a release. I just don't think he's good enough. And I want to find better left-backs. Who's next? Christian Marlowe, then. Now, I think this is a good one. Yep, 84% of you believe we should keep hold of Christian Marlowe. He's been a great servant to the club. Obviously, but, uh, current ability-wise, he's only a leading player for National League North and South sides, but I think his attributes, he's underrated by my assistant because some of his attributes really do fit in nicely. 15 passing, he's a decent penalty taker, he's okay teamwork, uh, work rate, sorry, uh, leadership's all right as well. He's not the greatest player in the world, but we're going to offer him a new contract. Doesn't mean he's going to accept one, of course, but we'll see. Oh, wait, wait a second. Second thoughts here. 1.1k a week. That is ridiculous, Christian. Sorry, but that's very unchristian of you to be wanting those wages when you're just an average player. Bang average player. I'm going to do that. If he doesn't want to accept 400 quid a week, I'm afraid we're going to have to let him go. That's that's the most I'm going to pay for you. Maybe 500 because that's what he's currently on. Let's, let's be generous. 500 because that's what you were currently on. But we'll reduce the appearance fee down. And I'm going to get rid of the unused substitute fee because those are weird hidden costs we don't want. Agent fee, he's been a bit greedy as well. 2.5k a week. Going to say no. So, I know 84% of you said we should keep Christian Marlowe. But the thing is, he wants stupid amounts of money. We can't be giving him 1.1k a week and making him, his, uh, us, him, us, us, I'm, I can't talk. <laughs> we can't make him our joint highest wage earner at the club along with Reese Walker it just it's not on so I'm afraid it might be my fault because I've left, left it to the last minute but but there we go we can get better anyway Charlie Lofts then 
I think most of you want me to keep him as well. 58% of you, it's not, it's quite a close one. 58% of you think we should keep Charlie Loft, but he didn't want to, he didn't want a new contract a couple of weeks, a few weeks ago when I offered it to him. So, and he still doesn't want one. So despite the fact you guys said we should keep him, we can't because he doesn't want to stay. I didn't do one for Char uh, for Sean Black because I'm going to let him go. He's not going to be good enough for us. He's had two average seasons out on loan in the National League levels. He did get promoted with Dagenham and Redbridge this season with Tim Green, but nine assists, that's decent. He had an okay season, but I think it was high. They were sort of pushed up by the fact they were a team that finished top of the league. So you'd have expected him to get a better average rating than that. So I'm going to let him go. He's not going to be good enough. So we're, we're set for release. And the last player is Bradley Berry. And 62% of you want me to release Bradley Berry. He, let's do a little bit, a little bit of a tribute to him because he was a, he was a cracking player on and off for us, wasn't he? And a lot of you still want to see him at the club, but he's not going to be good enough going forwards. He scored goals most seasons. First season, 14 goals. That was a really successful first season with us. But in the promotion season, he he was he was good, decent, not amazing. Nine goals, mainly off. Well, 17 starts, 21 games off the bench. Seven league goals. So he did contribute to getting us promoted. But that first season in the National League, he only played 11 games. There was a few injuries in there. He couldn't find the back of the net. He got four assists, but he just couldn't find the back of the net. Third, uh, fourth season with the club, nine goals again and seven assists. He did okay. He's always contributed in some way every season, whether it be assists or goals. And he's been that sort of option up front if we're struggling for players and he actually scored three goals in nine games four starts five sub appearances in that first season in league two and the following season three goals in eight games in league two he goes through these spells of getting goals unfortunately this season he was un unable to score in nine appearances only one start to be fair uh, but under 23 level he was good again but you guys have said we have to get rid of him so we're set setting him for release as well Going to try and find a better head, head of sports science. Um, and Nello Ferro is going to go as well. There we go. Goodbye, Sean Howcroft uh, and Gareth Sheriff. Marlow might accept a contract right at the end when his contract expires. If he's desperate and no one else wants him, he might sign for a cheaper cheaper wage. But it, I'm, not, I'm not having it. 1.1k a week, Christian Marlow. No, that is too much considering what our other players are earning. It is a sensible amount for this level at League One, to be fair, and I am underpaying these, some of these players, but still, it's it's not really good enough, in my opinion. I don't know why, when I look on this leaderboard thing, it's not showing my region or oversave, it's saying, saying, showing my Liverpool one, which I was unable to complete, of course. But the region Rovers one isn't appearing. I don't know if it's because I used create a club mode, and I started it on the beta, and it's not transferred across properly to the full version. It's just not showing. It's, it's a little bit irritating because I would like to see my point. I did mention this before, but there are people that have created Regen Rovers teams. I don't know if there'll be anyone on here. But when I was looking through, there were definitely people playing as a team called Regen Rovers. Can't seem to find anyone now. Might be because it's in League One. If I go and look at the South... Vanarama National League South. Maybe it's these ones. Now the, the team's removed, perhaps, and it's not shown the name of the team. But before, it was definitely shown Regen Rovers. It was interesting because... Oh, there's one. Bel Bellevant. If you're watching, hello. You're managing, you managed to get a lot of points in that National League South team with Regen Rovers. And there's another one there. See, I said so. It's, it's, it was really nice, actually, looking through and just seeing how many people had played as Regen Rovers. Obviously, they'd created their own team, whether it be on the Creative Club mode or... Pugam editor, I don't know, but for whatever reason, it's not showing me some some sort of error has occurred. Oh, the board would like to hold a meeting in order to discuss potentially expanding the available wage budget for the director. I don't care about a bloody director of football. I think a club would be better off spending on something else. Proving the youth club's youth recruitment, I think. Getting better youth in all, well, I mean, all these things, really. Let's go for that. Oh, youth recruitment policy is a key factor. Ah, brilliant. Fix your list for our second League One season. The 2025-26 season has been released. Let's have a look then and see who we will be playing. Uh, so, Gillingham on the first day of the season. On the last day of the season, we've got Accrington Stanley. When's Middlesbrough then? That's a big game. Middlesbrough. Middlesbrough. Where are you, Middlesbrough? Where's Middlesbrough? Why can't I find them? 
There's, there they are in April. I'm blind. Can't see them at the start of the season. Never mind. We do need to arrange some friendlies next. And we'll receive 170 k for featuring in League One in TV, right? So £601,000 in the bank at the moment. Lovely stuff. Yeah, only £4,684 on ground maintenance that month, which is good. First round of the EFL Cup draw as well. Let's have a look. Let's just draw all the teams. And we're taking on Colchester United in League Two. We might actually get through to the second round this season, guys. <laughs> That would be marvel marvellous. And youth recruitment improvement. I am pleased to confirm in writing the board's agreement to the request you have made at our recent board meeting. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, networking budget has been upgraded. So we operate at a fairly basic level. So it's improved from poor to fairly basic, I think. Which is good. Hopefully we can find some better players now. I think that's key, really, in improving. I mean, the academy needs to be improved, of course. But actually trying to find better players would be nice. Okay, it's time to arrange some friendlies. I might get some invites anyway, but I generally do the last one first. And we do it on the Saturday. If my club, my players are still unfit, I try and arrange like a midweek friendly with just the under twenty threes or something. I like to be like them to be at home as well. It's always good to get some large reputation teams in because it does bring the money in if you get the right team. But I don't think I want it on that last day. I'd like a, a smaller team at the end. Just so we can build up our confidence a bit. Maybe Lincoln City, who have been in the news recently. Not recently, according to Regen Rovers. I mean, 2017 is many moons ago now, of course. But you can see we get a decent income from that game. So we'll play Lincoln City on the last pre-season day. And earlier in the week, we will take on a bigger team. We'll take on we'll take on Arsenal, so we can bring in quite a bit of money. But the fee is a lot, so you do have to make sure you get everyone into the stadium. But we should we should bring everyone in for that, and then let's have an easier one nearby teams. If we just go for a like a really cheap one, you can still get decent money. And somewhere like Dorking, which obviously featured on a big day out before, we can get ten grand income, so it's nine thousand five hundred pound profit. That's how I see it. Anyway, I think that's how it works. You pay five hundred pounds to the team. That's the income you'll probably get. I don't know if it's guaranteed income or it's just projected income. If you fill the stadium, which we won't against Dorking, but we should still make a profit. Then I think we'll go for... Oh, Arsenal again. We don't want to do Arsenal twice. Let's go for a similar reputation team. Someone like... Well, if we bring in Cheltenham and we get 20k income, then that's that's pretty decent, isn't it? So just working our way back. Take on Sutton Common. I quite like them being at home as well. I mean, it's fair enough going away from home, but I think it's better for our finances... There are teams that will come up to me and, and offer a friendly, so we will get a fee anyway. So I might accept some and cancel some of these. Someone did say, arrange a friendly with Ebbsfleet. Get revenge. Because they always used to, we've never managed to beat them, have we? So, yeah, let's do that. I wouldn't say it's proper revenge when it's a friendly. It won't actually count, but but still, let's have a look. Let's look for Ebbsfleet. Where are you? They're not even on here. Ebbsfleet United. They are in League 2. Yeah, let's propose the friend friendly then. And yeah, we'll play at our place as well. And we will start off with a friendly just against our under-23s to warm up. We've got Ascot as well. But these might change if we get some offers from other teams. Yeah, here we go. I think they've they've been accepted, all of them, which is good. So this is our fixture list then. Region Rovers under-23s, Ascot, Ebbsfleet, Dartford, Sutton Common, Cheltenham Town, Dorking, Arsenal and Lincoln City. So the only real challenge is Arsenal. Cheltenham will be a challenge because they are in League 2, as are Ebbsfleet. They're a League 2 team. So it's nice to take on some reasonably difficult teams like Lincoln in the National League. They won't be they won't be easy. I tried to build the confidence. That's the main aim. Have a little bit of a challenge, but the main aim of preseason in my eyes is trying to build the morale. And that is such an important part of football manager these days. We don't desperately need the money these days. So friendly wise, I don't think it's it's necessary, I suppose. Uh, look, we've been offered 14 grand to take part in a testimonial match for Elliot Johnson. Why? Why? I mean, that is impressive for him to play for Barnet all those years. But I'm a bit confused as to why we are the ones that have been offered this. I'm going to... It seems a bit mean, but I'm going to reject it because I'd rather take on Lincoln City in that friendly and 
I think we'd get we're getting money from that anyway playing at home yeah I'm gonna reject that uh, Yeovil Town 16 grand if we take them on on the 19th of July between Sutton United and Cheltenham what's the Telford one 12 grand 23rd of July I reject that hmm Yeovil's intriguing they're a League 2 team as well so Sutton, then Yeovil, then Cheltenham within six days. Oh, it's been cancelled already. Well, that was quick. Ah, brilliant stuff. Region average attendance 4,415 this year, which was much larger than the previous average. Let's have a look at this. I think there's a way. Attendances. So the highest attendance every season, as you can see, has gone up. Well, two seasons ago it was actually larger than the, than the last season in Elite. That was weird. The first season in League 2 we had better, although that was in the FA Cup third round, I guess, compared to a league match. If we look at average attendances, though, it's got since we've um, built the new stadium in 2020, it's gone up every year, and it's double, almost double what the previous year, when we, our promotion year from League 2. So League 1 is really, really helping us looking at this. Our biggest ever gate receipts as well were this year against Rotherham United in the FA Cup second round. Brilliant stuff. Thanks for all your support, guys. Thanks for coming along. Oh, Brentford have made an offer for Foot Kachar. It's not enough. Brentford have obviously been relegated to League One. They are a team that we're going to have to look out for. If they're willing to pay half a million pounds, then fair enough. But they're not. You know, they're not going to pay that much, are they? Let's see how much they would be willing to pay. Let's take it down to 400. I don't want these monthly instalments. I'd want the money up front. That's 350 percentage of profit, 30%. They accept that. Mm. Oh, this is this is tough. What do I do? Furkacha, I do believe, has some potential to be a quality goalkeeper. He's a decent player for most League One sides right now. Do we go back to having Lisa Zellis as our number one? Of course, we could sign a different keeper if we get rid of Fukuchar, but I don't think we're going to fi find someone as good as him for this, the money that Brentford are signing him for. And we know what Brentford are like. They've not really done anything with Mohamed Garba. And 350 it's it's not going to be a life-changing amount for us, is it? Oh, I don't know. This is tough. I kind of feel he's... He's going to be a quality goalkeeper for us for many years. And I, I don't want to upset you guys. Obviously, I can't really do a poll right now to decide. I did do a poll asking who, who's your number one, Lisa Zellitz or Foot Control. Let's just have a look at that. If I go on Twitter, 69% of you put Foot Kachar out of 147 people that voted. So there's still a lot of people that see Lisa Zellitz as our number one. Oh, this is tough. I don't know what to do. I think I'm going to reject it for now. Wait, how, many, how many years has he got left on his contract? Two years. So we've still got an opportunity to sell him next summer if we don't sell him this year and we decide not to keep hold of him. I hate these decisions. I hate when teams come in for your players. Like if it was someone I don't really care about that much. Like if it's someone bid for Lee Orford. I'm not that bothered about him these days because he's not really performed for us the last two years. But someone like Fukuchai who's so important and you know a goalkeeper is so important. I don't know what to do. And Stanley Bridge would actually get paid 34.16k of this fee because we bought him from them for... How much did we buy him for? 24k. So it's a massive profit after just one season as well. I said this video was going to be long. Half of it's going to be me deliberating whether to sell bloody foot Kachar or not. I'm almost tempted to flip a coin, but... Let's have a look at him. Right. He's a quality goalkeeper. He's got 15 on handling, aerial reach... Reflex is 14, 13 on things like agility, 14 on decisions, 13 on positioning. There's some important, very strong attributes from him here. I think he has the potential to possibly be a, an OK keeper for a lower Premier League team in, in a while. He's already a decent player for most League One sides. He's 24. Of course, he's got to the, this is the latter stages of his youth career, I guess. But he's a goalkeeper, so he's still got the opportunity to progress, I do believe. If we look at him... His cons are he's, one very, he's very one-footed, should improve his first touch as well. But in just in the last three months, he's improved as a footballer, apparently. He's been improving all season. And this season, 6.96 average rating in all competitions. 
53 goals conceded in the league. Got 15, 16 clean sheets this year. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Look at this positioning. It's gone way up. Something like handling. Has that gone up? Oh, it doesn't matter. Attribute changes. Here we go. Handling. That's stayed at about the same level. Agility. That's... So, I mean, aerial reach has definitely gone up. Communication starting to go. Oh, I don't know what to do. I'm going to reject it. That's my gut instinct for now. These are the. I don't really look at the social feed anymore. I'm not sure anyone does, but you can. There's always someone in the middle saying, you know, being diplomatic, I guess. So there's always someone saying we should do the right thing and, and keep the player. And then there's Amelia Agnew who's saying we should let him go. If Guitar comes to me and says he wanted to leave, fair enough. I, I probably would let him leave. Alan Burnett, another decent looking potential goalkeeper. The thing is, I suppose we do have Nick Austin now, who could go on to be okay. I don't think he'll be for Kachar's level. I've risked signing him. Probably won't be good enough. Anyway, it does remind me, I'm going to release Grant Hunter. He's never going to be good enough for us. Off he goes. And I think we have to let Chris Holmes go. Been a good servant to us over the years. But the thing is, he's never going to be. He, he didn't... He played one game this year off the bench. Last year, a couple games. And he was he was average for us when he was a first-team player. But he's not going to be good enough going forward. So we'll let him go. Jordan Glover, mm, he's not going to be good enough. But he's our only Scottish player. I kind of want to keep him for that reason alone. <laughs> it's not a good enough reason, I know. Sean Black, we're going to let go. Neil Stone, we are going to let go. He's not going to be good enough. He's what's he, played one, he played one game last season. It was debut. So he's going to go. But everyone else, maybe Dan Orms. I think we're going to have to let Dan Ormsby go. Although he did score goals at under-23 level last year. Well, I don't know, why am I hanging on to him? He's done nothing, but he's been here since the second season. Which is kind of why I'm hanging on to him. We'll give him a little bit more time. I don't know, time for what? He's not going to get good or anything, but... It's hard to let things go sometimes, isn't it? Of course, some clubs are spending money. Blackburn Rovers already spent 3.7 million. Shrewsbury has spent 2.3 they only came up from League 2 with us, didn't they? So they've got money as well. And off they go. Off goes Hunter, Holmes and Stone. Chris Holmes will forever be remembered for forgetting to take off his tracksuit top. <laughs> Going onto the field of play and running around. Well, I'm flattered. This just shows how far I have come as a manager on this save. Because Bristol City have offered me a job. And Bristol City are in the Premier League this season. They finished top of the championship last year so they've been promoted to the Premier League this season I don't know why their manager has gone let's just have a quick look actually I'm curious because it's just been promoted so why would they get rid of their manager he's just left just decided to leave in June David Wagner interesting so yeah I, I mean I've, I've declined it of course I'm, I'm not moving but I've declined the interview they, they didn't offer me the job they offered me an interview but that's still impressive shows how far I've come. I, I mean, someone did suggest I should attend these interviews and then use that as leverage to get what I want from my board. So to try and improve the training facilities, for example. I've tried that a couple of times and both times it was unsuccessful. I just had to basically suck it up. I, I suggest these things. They said, no, we can't improve that. No, we can't improve that. So it wasn't, I'm not going to try that again for the time being. I might try it again at some point. It just feels a bit bad. It feels a bit disloyal doing that. And I want to be completely loyal to Regen Rovers. You can see we've just announced our profits for this season. Good gate receipts, merchandising, etc. £2 million profit. Turnover, £4.8 million. Things are looking up, definitely. Considering where we were, when we were in League 2, when we were promoted to League 2, and that first season, it really drained us somehow. And we're in the mi in, in the negative, weren't we? We got promoted to League One. It was still slightly in the negative. I think it was because of all improving the training facilities, improving the stadium, expanding the stadium, of course, to fit in with league regulations. So it cost a hell of a lot of money. We had to get, take up loans to build the stadium in the first place. We're still paying that back now, but it's definitely looking a lot more positive. So many scout reports, there's millions of them. And there's not actually that many decent players. I mean, this guy, he does stand out certain attributes because heading 12, marking 13, tackling 15, that's better than what we have in a way. But everything else lets him down, technically. He is atrocious at everything else. He's wanted by lower stuff town, so it shows his level. The difference between a player like this, and if you look at, I don't know, Sergio Ramos or, or Boateng in real life, they're players that can do a lot of other things. 
they don't just defend. They don't just have good defensive attributes. They've also, technically, they're good at other things as well. And that's what separates these these players, I suppose. Oh, a few players have returned in top condition. The thing is, Christian Marlowe could stay at the club on a non-contract deal. So he'd be earning, I don't know, £500 a week. £425 a week, sorry. You know, uh, f yeah, full-time month-to-month contract. I'm happy with that. And you guys did convincingly say that he should stay at the club. The th fact that he wanted 1.1k a week is, a, is insulting in a way to me, considering he's not our best player. Uh, it's understandable, I know. I mean, that's what you would do as a footballer, try and get as much money as possible, I suppose, from your club. But if he does leave, he's probably going to drop down to the Vanarama National League. We'll see how it goes, I suppose, for him over the summer. Charlie Lofts, though, some, I mean, he did say that he should, it was only just about, I think 54% of you said he should stay. The thing is, he's, he's lost trust in me. And I think I have to let him go. I know it, uh, there's not really that many people that thought he should, should stay compared to, to not stay. But I think I have to go with my gut feeling here and, and let him go. I don't feel comfortable keeping him. He's going to cause problems. His morale has been low for a couple of years because he's not being happy, really. Christian Marlowe, though. If I walk away, does that mean he stays? That's what it says there. If I, if he's willing to earn £450, what did I put? £500 a week. Get rid of that. If he's willing to accept that, then I'm happy to keep him. But no. I won't release from the club. We'll exit talks for now. He will stay for the time being. Now, Mohamed Garba has gone. To Brentford but he has been released by Brentford which means we can approach to sign him there's a lot of things he wants us to improve the attacking side of the team which I find a bit strange he wants to play in central midfield as an advanced playmaker which fits in with my uh, my new tactic in particular let's see what he wants he might want a ridiculous amount of money look we've missed out on the 50% sell on clause so that's a bit disappointing. Yaha Yah, he's gone back to Blackburn and they've given him another one year contract. We, can't, we won't sign him. Nello Farrow, I'm going to release him. He wants too much money as a scout. And Vasquez, I think I can find a better sports guy. Luke Holland, oh, he's been released. Let's go for him. Oh, why does he want so much money? Seriously, 2.6k a week. You're not. You're not. Oh, no. He might not move to a team and get a little bit desperate towards the end of the summer but I'm not willing to pay that much right now sorry he's he does look good I must admit and he but he only has the potential to be a, a league one player in the future according to my scouts there's a lot of players contracts running out next season so there are players we do have to get on board uh Reese Walker's actually gone up to 1.2k a week now Ugh. there's some decisions to be made but first of all, I'm going to look for a new sports scientist. Is that the right one? Vasquez. Yeah, sports scientist. So we look for the best one, according to, to fitness. If we go for this one, in fact. Or Carlos, Carlos Francis. 12 on fitness. Adaptability is pretty good. Brad Hutchinson. He's good at working with youngsters. He's also good at a few other things, which might help determination. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm going to lean towards this guy. £450 a week. It's Drag that down a little bit. Let's uh, get rid of that. And yeah, he's happy with that. Okay, now I need to decide on a few players right now whether next season I should release him or not. Or, you know, give them an early tr contract. Reese Walker, things are going a bit down for him at the moment. Apparently he's a decent player for most League 2 teams. Potential to be a League 1 central defender in the future. He's 23 years old now. He needs to be progressing as a player right now. I, I think he's, he's served us very well. Maybe we do need to get a better centre-back this season. Because Danny Byrne and Reese Walker weren't completely convincing at times. Let's see how much he'd want. Uh, 2k. So he's going to want money as well going forwards. And there's a lot of add-ons. Tempted to just, for now, I think we either have to give him a contract actually or try and sell him and get some money from him. Let's try and pull down, down, that down to 1.4. Drag that down, drag that down. I mean, fair enough if he wants a promotion wage rise and a, a yearly wage rise. If we get relegated, release clause is high. Minimum fee release clause to a high division club, 550k. Wouldn't mind if someone came in with that. Let's suggest this. Wait, it's 1.6k. That's okay. 
we drag this down as well, then that's fair enough. It'd be our top earner by a long way. Does he deserve that money? I don't know, maybe not, but we're a League One team now. We're going to have to pay League One wages. Diaz, another one that I've always had high hopes for. Potential to be a, a leading, a good League One player. Do we give him another contract right now? He'd want nine, he, he doesn't want a huge amount of money. He wants a fair amount, but not masses compared to Reese Walker. Let's go with that. And let, let's extend it to three years to see what he says. 925, 875, let's, 850, drag that down. This is what you have to do. You just have to haggle. Let's drag that down as well. Three years, two years, okay. Just, he doesn't want more than a two year contract. Let's drag that down. Two year contract, there we go, 850. We've haggled him down a bit. Francis Arthur Awusu. I almost forgot about him, to be honest. At Maidstone, he didn't have the best year. And I think I'm going to stick him, keep him in, hmm, let's have a look. Apparently, he's our second best striker. He's going to get back into the first team. We'll, we'll see how he does over pre-season. Now, I need to think about my strikers because I've got so many. I think I need to try and sell Joe Mohamed, maybe Lee Orford as well. There's a few coaches. I'll, I'll do that later on, I think. Patrick Dibber. I think we need to give him another contract, don't we? He's just been, he's been loyal. He's never really progressed a huge amount. Let's, let's leave it for now. Players like Jonathan Edwards have got potential as well. Oh, decisions, decisions. This is what I go through every season behind the scenes. Just trying to decide what is the best for the future, trying to weigh up all the options. Colin McGuigan, I kind of feel like he's proved himself at board today. He hasn't proved us, himself at us, but I think I need to give him a new contract just in case. And if we give him a three-year contract, he doesn't want a huge amount of money at all. 15 games, he wants to be increased. Let's, let's push that up to, to 30 games. Big high release clause, that's fine. Let's just push that down a bit. Okay, did that? Any, did anything change there? £230 a week. Yeah, okay, that's fine. I, I kind of feel he's got real potential, but we've got so many strikers and we need to we need to make some decisions. Now the club looks a little bit light since releasing a few players. Players like Joe Mohamed, we have to get rid of. He's never going to be good enough. Let's offer to clubs. He's not going to go for very much at all. He's literally worth nothing. So if we just offer him for 20k to start with, but someone like Lee Orford, who worth 210k, he has been brilliant for us on and off. And he, of course, he won player of the season that year. He scored 17 goals and got 18 assists. He was fabulous for us that year in the first year in League One. But since then, I mean, to be honest, the whole time at Region Rebels, he's been injury prone, hasn't he? I've had a few comments from you guys as well saying he's just not good enough. So let's offer him. Let's offer him out. He's worth 200k. Let's just see if anyone's stupid enough to pay 250k to start with. So then we've got Uda, McGuigan, Jack Young, obviously backup, Spencer Drury, Craig Palm, Brady Chick's still here. He's got one year left on his contract. He's an option, isn't he? Something different. But in the middle, we've got Murray, Diaz, Marlowe, Miguel's come back from on loan. Who have we got in the under 23s that can go up to the first team? Neil Dixon's going to move up. Still got Oli Barber as an attacking option. Good to have Tim. We're sorted at right back. Stephen Dean, Tim Green. That's fine. Left back, we've literally got no one. Charlie Loft, <laughs> who um, I'm releasing. So he's he's going. We've got no left backs. We need a left back desperately. We need two left backs desperately. That is the task for the next few minutes. Find a left back. So first of all, I'm looking for lone players. So I've used this filter i know some of you actually want a helpful video here as well how i am looking for players so this is what i've done looking for a cent a left back at the most age 25 because all regens are 26 and under but i'm going for 25 and under loan status listed so <laughs> say he's a no it stands his name certainly stands out he's listed by cardiff who are actually in the premier league this season let's see if we can get him on loan no, they want him to be playing with higher quality players, so that's a no-go. <laughs> Next up is Cesar Valverde, but I don't think... Yeah, I can't loan foreign players. I can't loan them from Real Madrid anyway. I filtered by value, so generally the most valuable players, especially when I'm looking for loan ones, they're going to be the better options to try and sign or go for to start with. I'm unlikely to get any of these. You can see they want them to be playing with better opposition. Marcus Olsen, though, who plays for Bristol City who came in for me, of course, and I've come across him. When did we When did we come up across him? I can't remember. Ah, brilliant. He would be an exceptional player. I think he was on loan last season with someone, actually. 
Now, what I, I want him to come for it to us because he might look at Regen Rovers and think, Regen Rovers, who the hell are they? But if we just say you're going to be a key player, then maybe he'll like he might actually sign. So let's go with that. He is he he does look good, well-rounded, physically very good. He was on loan at Exeter City the last two years. There we go. That's why I've come across him. He could be a really quality player if we're able to get hold of him. But we might have to go for someone else. Maybe Buti and Mogelt from South Africa, Nottingham Forest player. Let's have a. I mean, we could even get two players on loan. They want fifty percent of his wages. Um, he he looks pretty good. Let's just go for those two to start with. If we can't get either of them. Go on to the next ones. We might be able to get both. If I loan players, they can be good, and other times they just really flop, don't they? And they don't try. Olsen's been accepted, and Mugetel has been accepted as well. I don't think anyone's bid for for Lee Orford yet. Unfortunately, I don't know if anyone's interested in him. Let's just reduce it down to how much he's worth. I just think we need to cash in on a couple of players, and Lee Orford seems like a sensible choice. Oh, Tim Green's withdrawing his formal transfer request. That's great because you're going to be my backup this year. And Mohamed Gal, oh, I'm surprised at how little he wants. It's only 1k. Let's reduce it down. We obviously, want to try and get the best possible deal. Relegation release clause 400k, 550k release clause generally. Let's just reduce these down. I'm fine with that. And he's accepted that. I still, I mean, this is a bargain, really. We sold him for 450k. If we get him back on him back, we get him back on a free. That's brilliant. It doesn't matter that we've lost the 50% sell-on fee. I'd have rather, of course, him go on leaps and bounds at Brentford and be sold to Man United for 50 million pounds. But that was, I guess, a long shot. So we're getting a free player who we sold for 450k, and we might be able to sell him again in the future anyway. No one wants Lee Orford or. Mohammed. Uh, I wonder how much we could actually get for Lee Orford. Maybe it's really just not very much at all. Let's put it down to 150. Maybe that's a bit more realistic. And Joe Mohammed, I think it's a bit, we might even be able to get rid of him for free. But let's put it down to 10k. I think maybe a centre back would be a good option as well on loan. Just a young, hungry centre back wanting some glory. Rob Hill from Crystal Palace, for example, looks good. Loan offer, no. Higher quality players. Sam Braithwaite, Man United. Nope, better quality players. Blah, 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 blah. AC Milan player, no. I think it's often sometimes they don't want to move them to a foreign lower league team either. So Scott Fox at Hull City. He's been on loan at League One Wickham last year. Did pretty decently, actually. Let's have a look at him. Yeah, okay. 50% of wages. It's a lot of money a week, but that's fine. We've got the money to play around with this season. I just feel Danny Bai is his time over. I know he won player of the season last year according to the game, but that's just the game being stupid. But Scott Hill, Scott Fox, sorry. He's a similar looking player. Heading's not particularly high, similar to, to my centre backs. But he's got a bit of pace about him as well, hasn't he? Positioning's very good. His concentration's not bad at all. He could be a very good player for us, and it'd be nice to get another Scottish player in. So that's been accepted as well. Brentford outline intentions for Fuat Kachar. Interesting. This transfer window has officially started now. Now then, where are we expected to finish this season? Let's have a look. Early on. Season preview. We're still bottom. What? The game... I mean, this must be an error of the game, with the creator club mode. Especially on the beta. Maybe it hasn't updated properly for the full game when I obviously started playing the, the full game when it came out. But when you're expected to finish bottom, surely that's a reputation thing rather than the quality of players we have. Because we have better quality players than some of the teams in this division. It is ridiculous how we're always expected to finish bottom of the table. It's just stupid. I, I think it's going to be that way every year. Even if I had Messi in the team, I think it would do the same thing. Charlie Lofts has left the club. Will he be going anywhere? Let's follow him to just have a look into the future. And a few clubs have released big players. Look. Ericsson's left, Callum Wilson, Chadley, a few big players have left their respective teams. This guy's probably a regen. Yeah, he is. Wouldn't mind signing him. He's a, a big lad up front, but no, of course not. Ah, Marcus Olsen's rejected. Let's try again. It often takes a couple of attempts. Neil Dixon's injured for uh, we could play through injury. I think so. We'll, we'll do that because it means he's trying to get match fit. JJ's injured, doesn't really matter, he's not going to play really. 
There was a couple of things I wanted to do. I wanted to do some tutoring for Nick Austin in particular. Tutoring, if we go for... It's often good to try and mix, match the personalities, otherwise they just fall out, I find. But fairly professional, maybe Sivzelis would be a better tutor. Fairly ambitious versus fairly professional. Let's go for Sivzelis. I can get I can get both of them to tutor them at the same time, I suppose, over time. Yeah, I want to do Jonathan Edwards. If we get Danny by. Resilient versus fairly ambitious. We're, we'll give it a go, see if it works. Lee Lovegrove, that was one I definitely wanted to do. Tim Green. Apparently is the only player or match up there. No one wants these players. Lee Orford, please. It'd be nice to make some money from you, but if you have to stay, you have to stay. Joe Mohammed. I might just have to offer you up for nothing. Oh, Birmingham City have actually offered money for Marcus Olsen. Ah, but we're getting Booty Mogetal on loan, which is good. So if we can't find get Olsen, then this player's decent as well. So, oh, that's fine. Got a left back at least. We've got one left back now. Welcome to the club, Booty. Two and a half star player, so he's not as good as what we had last year. In Yaha Yar, but maybe he will be better because perhaps he won't actually get sent off or get loads of yellow cards. He's got good teamwork. Apparently he's only suited to National League level, but never mind. He's actually got two caps to South Africa, which is impressive. Still no one wants these players. Why is Orford worth so much? 75k, come on. Someone. Lee Orford, uh, Joe Mohammed. Surely someone will want him for like 1k or something. So it's my first friendly of season 10 of Region Rovers. We're taking on the under 23s. I won't be showing these games live because we'll be here all day. But I mean, some games I will leave to my assistant. I will show you the goals after the match though. Scott Fox has rejected me. I'm going to I'm going to try again. We say he's a key player, centre back. See if that makes a difference. He can play left back as well, which would be useful. As a backup, I guess. So as expected, we walloped the under-23s. 5-0, 16 shots there, night Dominated. We were expected to. They actually had more possession, though, strangely, strangely enough. I did actually put quite a few of the first-team players into the under-23s just to see how they get on, I guess, against my first 11, my preferred 11. And they just couldn't compete. So it does show the difference in quality between our first team and our backup players, which is probably why games against Plymouth in the in the playoffs in that first leg of course when we had to play not our first 11 they struggled this was the first goal of the game then in the 24th minute passing around nicely Craig Palmer into Udder through to Dibber who found the back of the net Craig Palmer then scored uh, a minute later I think Murray heading it into Dibber over the top for Spencer Drury who crossed it in and it was an easy tap in for Craig Palmer and Spencer Drury got two goals himself after that this was the first one to make it 3-0. Spencer Drury out wide to our new on loan left back. He put a ball into Drury to find the back of the net. A nice assist for Morgetto. I don't know how to pronounce that name. So if anyone has any idea, but, you know, informed ideas, you know someone with that last name, preferably that would be, be the best information. This was the second goal. Lee Orford with the assist coming off the bench. He's, of course, I'm trying to sell him, but still pick, picked up an assist. Maybe I should keep him. I don't know. It's just got so many strikers, but then if we're playing three up front, we need lots of choice, don't we? This was the last goal. Good ball in, and McGuigan, the Northern Irish player, coming back into the first team. Is, actually, this is his first ever game for Region Rovers. Of course, it doesn't count as an official appearance, but still, to score in his first ever game, a friendly against the Region Rovers under-23s, not bad at all. Uh, Guilherme Diaz has signed a new two-year deal then, so he's staying for a couple more years at least. Still no one wants Lee Orford. Maybe we're going to have to hang on to him for now. Perhaps we'll just just keep hold of him. As a backup, I suppose. And no one wants Joe Mohammed for £1,000. It's ridiculous. Let's offer him out for free. His contract expires next year. At least we'll save some money. I just don't think he's up to the standard we require. Walker signed a new deal. He's earning the most money at the club by a, a, a long way. 1.6k a week been with us so long it's great to see him actually get into this point where he has progressed as a player he's had two good solid years behind him I think he will be first choice centre back but Danny Bai his position is under threat maybe from Jonathan Edwards our Welsh centre back our young Welsh centre back or perhaps another player that we bring in Kevin Miguel what do I do with him he's just he's never really progressed has he 
I think we should probably try and sell him. I just, I don't see him. I always thought he had potential, but he doesn't. He doesn't have potential. We're offering him out for 60k for now. McGuigan has signed a new contract, which is good to see. Oh, his hair's changed. He's got the old thing where the hair keeps changing again. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to look for players where their contract has expired. Just to have a look to see if there's anyone decent worth signing. Probably isn't, but you never know. Greg Cross, Stuart Warren, he's been released by Blackpool. Uh, I'm tempted to sign him as backup this year, but I think that'd be stupid. Andrew Fletcher actually looks pretty good, but I don't need strikers. That's the thing, I've got so many strikers. He's 22 years old, where has he played? Played for Crow Alexander last year on loan. He's, he's played for West Brom his whole, well, since signing from Fulham. He's pacey, isn't he? That's for certain. He would actually be our best striker, according to my my scout. But he doesn't want to sign anyway, so that was a waste of a minute looking at him. Maybe midfield is a, is a position we need to try and shore up. Mohamed Gob hasn't accepted our bid yet, by the way. This guy's got 17 on passing, but I don't think he's good at anything else. I don't know. These, I don't think these players are good enough. Maybe this Italian player played for Inter. He looks good. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a, have a, gonna give him a con. Well, try and give him a contract. There's clubs interested in Miguel, but he's probably been. They're probably being priced out. He doesn't want a huge amount. Luciano Nocera. Is it Nocera or let's call him Luciano? Let's just go with that. Let's give him a two-year deal. He only wants a year. I'd, I'd quite like two years because. He's only 20. Gives him a couple years to develop. He's, he's quite an aggressive player, I suppose. But I, I do like the look of him. He could be alright. He's not a very hard working player. He could be a backup for Diaz, I suppose. Here we go. Garba's signing for us then. <laughs> Back to Regen Rovers officially. He had an average season last year. He does need to up his game. But he's still got potential to be a decent player. Potential to be a League One central midfielder. Another very convincing win against a team we should be thrashing in Ascot. Nice badge, actually. Quite like that. 4-0. And I actually played Jonathan Edwards at the start of this game instead of Danny Bai. Just to see how he fits in, I suppose, to our starting eleven. Lots of substitutes came on, as usual. That's what I like to do in friendlies, just to build up the fitness of as many players as possible. The first goal was a Stephen Dean free kick. Keeper couldn't keep that out. And that put us 1-0 up early on in the game. Then Colin McGuigan, who started this game instead of Spencer Drury, got a goal. Lee Orford putting a ball through. McGuigan finding the back of the net. And then a penalty from Lee Orford. Maybe we should keep him. In the first couple games, he has proven to be an important player for us. And then in the 81st minute, Christian Marlowe, who, a money-grabbing midfielder, <laughs> managed to make it four. Of course, he's on a non-contract, but hasn't left the club. So, I mean, another team could come in for him and sign him on a free. But he's he's happy to stay on this just rolling contract, £410 a week. I'm fine with that at the moment. So, for now, we'll just have to hang on to him. He's got another year on his contract. I suppose we get these players every now and then. that They just they stay for a while, but they're never going to be good enough. And we can't sell them. We can't make a profit from them. They just give the team some bulk a backup if we really need them. Are there any players I should be loaning out this year? Oli Barber again, he's 21 now. Should be trying to break into the first team. He doesn't quite fit into our tactic because he is an attacking midfielder, really, isn't he? So it's difficult to, let's, let's train him. Train him as a central midfielder, advanced playmaker. Let's try and make something from him because we uh, he was a free player, I know. He's been on loan to York City on three different occasions now over a three year period so and last year why didn't he play last year what happened there ah no wait i'm getting confused this is this season so it, it's counting the season for some reason last season 24 25 season, he played plenty of games for york city yeah he's been on loan twice i correct myself there yeah don't know what's gonna happen to him we'll have to just wait and see Olsen's rejected us again i'm still i'm gonna be persistent because if we can get him he'll be a quality player for us next season so I'm going to just persist with him. I mean, if he was willing to go to Exeter City, surely he's willing to go to us. Because the League One team, we are a decent team, I know. The thing that's getting in the way for us is the fact that we're predicted to finish bottom of the league every single year. So the game is screwing us over, making it more difficult for us. Because loan players just see us as a whipping boys. They don't actually look 
at how well we've done in our history. It's really annoying, but there we go. It's just a challenge we have to work with, I suppose. I just realised, is that Jack Grealish? No, it's Daniel Grealish. <laughs> for what? What is Jack Grealish playing in League One for? But he, he is quality. Look at him. He's going to rip up League One for Middlesbrough. How did they get relegated all this way? Now, against Ebb's fleet, I'm going to play this new tactic. Now, we know what damage this tactic can do against weak teams because there's just so many strikers going forwards causing problems but let's see against a slightly stronger team an Ebbsfleet fleet league two team they're obviously decent we'll try something different Dibble will play there we're going to play garber on the right hand side as the more attacking midfielder diaz on the left and then in defensive midfield we're going to give neil dixon a go now up front mcgugan will play as the advance forward and then we want udda as the target man not sure the combination up front. Maybe we need an advance forward and a poacher. Maybe we need no target man, no advance forward. I don't know. We'll have to work that out, I suppose, as time progresses. But let's try this. Going to persist with Jonathan Edwards as the centre back today. And of course, we're, we'll keep Booty at left back. Let's, I, I don't have to pronounce that last name. Let's nickname him. He's going to be called Booty. Booty. We still couldn't beat them, even in a friendly. What? Ebbsfleet, my nemesis, why? Why can I not defeat you? It's so unfair. Uh, the new tactic was all right up until the end of the game when I'd made substitutes. I don't know whether it's the tactic didn't work as, as well as I hoped or whether it's the new personnel coming onto the pitch because for large portions of this game, we were great on the ball, keeping hold of it. And it might be the substitutes, but then again, they made loads of substitutes as well so I don't know if that really can be an excuse you, you see we did take the lead through an own goal uh, it was actually Oli Barber that uh, created this I think he did we get oh, I don't know what I can't remember who I started but anyway Oli Barber hit the ball and it hit into Fraser and went into the back of the net they then got a goal back but it was a free kick so you can't really do much about that it's nothing to do with the tactic in my opinion it's not like it wasn't working it's just a direct free kick that we unable to keep out Palmer came onto the pitch late on in the game and actually managed to get a, a, a second goal for us to put us into the lead Tim Green put a good ball in and Palmer with a nice finish but it, there was some lovely football from us passing it around the midfield getting it into the box and we, we did quite well I did change the tactics a little bit we went more expressive and attacking turned off being more disciplined because it was pretty boring game for the first 40 minutes unfortunately it was a long ball over the top that got them their second equalizer just look at this it's just pumped over Jonathan Edwards and Tim Green couldn't catch the, the striker who found the back of the net but it's early days for this maybe I should go for a classic 4-4-2 as my second option um, but if I was to do that of course I'd need to find a left midfielder and a right midfielder and uh, I don't know Bad news though, Larry Udder is out injured for five to six weeks. It's a real shame. It's frustrating for him, frustrating for us, because he'll be out at the start of the season. Our main man in the middle, I guess. Perhaps Lee Orford will play a little bit of a, a bigger part to play. I don't know. I don't know what to do about him. Not really. He's 25 years old. He hasn't improved for quite a while. So Brad Hutchinson has agreed to be our head of sports science. And Olsen has rejected us again. I don't think we're going to get him, are we? How much would they want if we wanted to buy him? <laughs> Big money. Come on, please, Marcus, come. Is there anything else we can give you? Even What about, like, six months? You don't have to be here the whole season. Just stay for six months and then think about it. Here we go, Brad Hutchinson has arrived. I mean, I don't really know. I think they help with recovery time after a match. There's nothing you can... You can't make them do anything, I don't think. Ah... Luciano's coming to Regen Rovers. Welcome, Luciano. I'm gonna. I'm actually gonna nickname him that just because I'm not 100% sure how to pronounce the last name, and it just sort of stands out. Luciano. There we go. He's he's gonna go straight into the first team, but be available for the end of 23. So I I think he's got some potential. Got two year contract. He played for Inter, so they must have considered him to have potential at some point. He just didn't manage to make it there. And Olsen's rejected us again. Is there anyone else we can get on loan that's actually pretty decent? What about Jan Elkenar from Holland? I don't think I'm... Yeah, they prefer to play with higher quality players. This guy from Italy doesn't actually look, look that good though. Jack Fleming. 
Sheffield United under no, he's not good enough. We've already got one one left back on loan, so it's probably a bit risky to get another left back on loan. Let's just try and find our own left back. Realistic transfers. Liu Yo. Uh, no, it doesn't look good. Why is he worth so much? He's got seventy four caps for for China though already. That would tap into a Chinese market. Maybe we will get some money. But he plays for Gongzhu Evergrande, so he's probably earning. Yeah, he's earning a lot of money. Kai Husham, Hausham. He looks okay, actually. Not bad. He's quite aggressive again, though. Let's just do a little scalp to see if there's any hidden things going on behind that we don't want. But he's played for some decent league teams. He played for uh, Blackpool in League 2, Shrewsbury in League 2 and League 1, and now Carlisle United last season in League 1. But they got relegated, of course. They had a terrible time. They signed him for 400k as well. So, hmm. But a bit, bit, bit of risk going in him, I think. Grotti. Maurizio Grotti from Italy. <sighs> no. <laughs> it's so hard to, to know who's suitable, I suppose, for this level. But if we look at Booty, and what I will do is, I'm going to find similar players, of which there's, there's literally no one, but... What I can do is remove a few things that aren't... I mean, he's got... Wait, has Booty got tackling of 20? Or have I just accidentally... Yeah, I just accidentally increased that. Let's go back. Where were we? Ah, so there's a few options here. But they're, <laughs> they're all worth ridiculous amounts of money. And none of them are actually regens. This guy, Sasa Tesic, plays with Sisena. I don't think we're going to be able to sign him somehow. Lucas... No, he's not a regen... Joe Lewis isn't even a regen. This guy, he's a regen. He doesn't look too bad. Let's compare him with Booty, our on loan defender. And then have a look at fullback. Let's go for support. He's better at crossing. Same at marking, same at tackling. Anticipation slightly higher. Concentration is not great. That could be a problem. Positioning is slightly better. Teamwork is slightly lower. Work rate's higher. And stamina is better. He could be decent, actually. Another Italian player, Matteo Vitelli. Let's give him a go. Oh, <laughs> after all that, I should really check this first, shouldn't I? Emiliano Laquinardi, a Fiorentina player. I, I think he's probably a bit above our level. Oh, Fiorentina not willing to allow this player to leave on loan due to his first team. However, they might be willing to reconsider. We can pay 20% of his wages, guys. You know, we're playing play him as a key player as well. We'll be, be starting. Let's just offer that and hope for the best. Oh no, Ollie Barbie. You impressed me in the last friend and you've got injured for five to six weeks now. Well, that's depressing. Sorry. Sorry, Ollie. Ah, uh, I, I don't think. Yeah, they, they don't want me. They don't want me to take Emiliano off their hands, I'm afraid. We still need to look for someone, though. We need to look for a, a good centre back, I think. I don't mind spending money on the right player. We do have money to play around with, but. It has to be on the right sort of player. Maybe like Kenneth Eekman, who would be a good player, I think. If Let's just compare him. Danny Bai. Let's see how he compares with Danny Bai. The legend. Centre-back. Defend. Similar, actually. Uh, heading's the same. Slightly better marking. Much better tackling. Positioning is actually worse, though. And jumping reach is worse. But there's other attributes which adds to his game I guess but it's a risk signing someone like this because he's not that much better than Danny Boy and if I was to sign him it probably would be quite a bit of money in fact no I can't actually afford him <laughs> and he's so if I can't afford a player that's worse than Danny Boy what what's going to happen Marcelo Torino he's similar as well in fact he's very similar worse at jumping reach though Yet again, though, why, I mean, what's the point in signing someone that is the same ability as Danny Bai? And they're going to want they want 400k for him. I can't, I can't buy someone for 400k who's worse than Danny Bai. It just doesn't make any sense, does it, to do that? Ibrahim Jahu. He looks good. I'd happily sign him, but how much money would they want? Ah, oh, too much. So this is what you have to do, guys. You just have to persist. It takes a lot of time. Preseason can take a hell of a long time if you do it properly. Don't just whiz through. You really have to take your time trying to find good players. I mean, this guy looks great. Uh, we can't actually sign him. Oh, we can sign him on a free. Why is that? He's, oh, his contract's expired. 
Interesting. Let's have a look at him. How does he compare with Danny Boy? Well, he's, he's worse at a few things, but the key things he's better at. It's just the rest of his game isn't that great. Um, well, heading he's better at, marking he's a lot better at, tackling slightly better position. He's only slightly worse, and jumping reach is only slightly worse. And he's two years younger than Danny Bai. It's worth the risk, I think, although oh, hell of a lot of money. But maybe it is worth the risk. And if it doesn't work out after 12 months, we just let him go. Let's just pull that down all the way down to 200. Let's see what he says. Oh, he wants a lot. He wants a lot of money. I mean, I'm willing to offer one and a half thousand pound a week, but not an appearance fee as well. 1.8, 1.6k a week. Okay, just trying to scrimp on everything here. 1.6k a week. Okay, it's less than than Reese Walker, just about. Would he be a, a good enough player to dislodge Danny by? He's brave, a little bit aggressive, but when you're brave, it's not so bad. And he's good at tackling anyway, so he should hopefully win every win every tackle. But other things he's not very good at. He, he can't part. He can't do any technical stuff apart from defend essentially. But that's all I want someone to do, I suppose. So another friendly against Dartford. I am actually going to try this out again. But what I'm going to do is we're going to play a poacher and an advance forward together, and we're going to go attacking and be more expressive. Play it through the middle. Ah, another decent win against Dartford, 3-1. Probably should have been a bit better from us. We did have quite a few chances and didn't find the back of the net with all of them. Stephen Dean was man of the match. Orford, Dean scored a goal as well, and Arthur Owusu with the goals. But at halftime, it was 0-0. I'd gone with the this defensive tactic, changed it to the other tactic at halftime, and we were much better in the second half. We were solid in the first half, but uh, defensively solid, but it wasn't creative enough so I think this tactic will be good when we're trying to hold on to a win or possibly get a draw against the top team but against teams we should be beating we have to go with the more attacking option that's my conclusion so far from trying out both of these two tactics in pre-season this was the first goal then Spencer drew across to Orford who found the back of the net he's filled in for Udda and he's done really well in pre-season there's I can't really sell him now after his performances so far. Stephen Dean with another free kick goal. Quality from our brilliant right back. And Arthur Awusi had a couple chances in this game. And finally managed to find the back of the net in the 90th minute. Craig Palmer all the way over the top. Arthur Awusi, great header at the back post. Hasn't scored for us. Has he scored for us before? Obviously this, this goal won't count because it is only a pre-season game. But... That first, yeah, he played six games on loan a couple seasons ago when he came to the team. Didn't manage to get a goal. At Maidstone, it wasn't the best of years for him. Nine goals in 39 games in the National League. I don't know where Maidstone finished. Let's just have a look. They they finished towards the bottom of the table. They didn't score many goals. Whether that's because of Arthur Awusi, maybe he didn't have as many chances and the team weren't producing for him. But they were one of the lowest scorers in the division. I do believe in him, though. I love his name. That's that's probably the, the main reason for signing him. But I do believe he could be a decent poacher for us. Probably back up for Spencer Drury. I've been offered another job. I'm tempted to try this theory where if you attend the interview, you can sort of get what you want from your chairman. If you uh, make it public knowledge, I suppose, that you've gone for an interview. So there, completed the interview. We'll see what my chairman says. Of course, if I get offered a job, I reject it anyway. But I feel a bit bad. Like I said, a loyalty sort of thing to Regen Rovers. I feel bad sort of going for interviews. But I kind of feel if I can improve Regen Rovers as a result, then it's the lesser of two evils, I guess. Still on the lookout for another left back. We've been rejected by Marcus Olsen a few times. We've only got Booty now, haven't we? Who can play left back. I mean, yeah, that's it. Literally no one else can even slot into left back up front we're fine we've got so much strength and depth up front i've not had to sign new strikers for a while really have i uh, if the right player came along that was a reasonable fee then fair enough but at this present moment in time we don't want to waste money but we're about to sign gerard fisher a dutch center back on a free he's earning a lot of money but i kind of feel like he could be a decent player for us and he becomes our first Dutch player at Regen Rovers. I know there's a few 
people from the Netherlands that do watch my videos. So you've got someone to to get behind now. He slots in already straight away as well. Actually, that's my goalkeeper and a coach coach thinking that. Where's my let's go for a defensive coach. A Dutch coach, in fact, talking about a Dutch player, but does believe that Fisher, Bayern, Edwards are all three-star current abilities. What does the other guy think? Another Dutch guy. I think he's he's on a par with Bayern, maybe slightly better. What does he need to improve in training? Uh, he's not bad at most things, really, is he? Concentration could be better, but he can't improve that. I don't think. Let's go for let's go for positioning for now. Region Rovers proposed talks to stay at club. Having heard that you may be considering leaving Region Rovers for a job in the near future, Chairman, blah 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 blah. He'd like a talk. Discuss current vision. I would like to make a request to the board. What would you like to request? So training facilities, youth facilities, youth coaching. How about pushing the club's academy to the next attainable level? We don't agree with your proposal, blah, blah, blah. Do I risk it? Do I go for that option? Ah, uh, I don't know. I, I feel like, what happens if he turns around and says he's going to sack me? I can't risk... Oh, can I? Can I risk it? <laughs> I'm not going to leave the club, don't worry, Rene. But he's refusing to spend money on the Youth Academy. So that theory, that sort of way of going about requesting things, it doesn't always work. I've tried it two times now during the series and it's not worked both times so i don't see the point in going for interviews anymore hull have made a bid for oh interesting neil dixon who of course didn't play for us last season he was on loan thinking about using him as my main defensive midfielder this year he is improving amazingly in training he's having an incredible time if i just this is always a good thing to do. I've I've never really done this enough, but I watched Fox in the Boxes video recently about morale and it reminded me that morale is such a huge part of football manager. So improving having a talk to players about how well they're doing in training, how they're doing in matches, their recent form, etc. It does have an impact. And I'm impressed. And that's it, it's gone from okay morale to fairly good morale. But if they want to buy him, then I think they'll have to spend big on him. We'll just put it up. Suggest terms. Oh, they've accepted that 250k plus over the next 12 months. 86k, 53k after 10 league appearances. 10k per league appearance for the next 10 games. And if he gets an international cap, that's 53k plus a 50% sell-on fee. I've been talking about that he should be a big part of our plans this season. And he will be a good player in the future, but. That is hard to reject. He's currently worth six thousand pounds. His value is six grand. That's nothing. And Hull have bid effectively three hundred twenty-five thousand pounds when you add all these extras. Plus, it's definitely at least three hundred twenty-five grand uh, with the monthly fee over the next twelve months. Plus, even more. That could be massive. And remember, we signed him for 1K. That's an incredible bit of business. We don't know if he's actually going to be good enough for my team. We don't even know if we're going to play this defensive midfield position at tactic very often. So it kind of makes sense to sell him for now. And then if I do need a defensive midfielder, we do have options. See, from this long video, you can see all the things I go through every preseason. Pre my deliberation is I just have to get things right. I want to get things right. I want to make the right decision. It's tough. It really is tough because I don't want to sell certain players. But if bids come in for them, then we have to be pragmatic. Under 23s, just won 5 now. I've played a few of the first team players in there. Lee Orford scored. Arthur Wusi scored twice. Brady Chick and Eamon Lynch also managed to score. Uh, well, then, we've just murdered Sutton Common Rovers. Poor old Sutton Common. <laughs> look at this, 8-0. Well, let's have a look at the goals because we I let my assistant take control of this and he just... We've unleashed a monster on them. Let's have a look at the goals. So the first goal was from Colin McGuigan. Diaz threw to Spencer Drury here. He was tackled and... They look like they were on this, but look at us. We had 25 shots to their three, 55% possession, seven clear cut chances, four half chances. We really did murder them. It it was an impressive display. Well, of course, we should be thrashing this sort of team. They're a regional team. They're pff, nothing. There's nothing about them that is good. But still, it's, it's quite fun winning 8 0, isn't it? Getting all your strikers to just destroy the opposition. And it boosts confidence going into 
the season, doesn't it? If you get all these goals, Spencer Drury with with a lovely goal. Had a few people turn up for this as well. It wasn't completely empty, this stadium, despite the fact we were playing a, a very unknown team in the grand scheme of things. Spencer Drury back to Dibber. This is the is this the third goal? I think so. Arthur Awusu played as the target man to start with in this game. We had Dibber in the ball in a midfielder role. Garber, lovely ball through there. McGuigan across to Spencer Drury for his second goal of the game. And I think he got another one. We just completely destroyed them. This is... Oh, no, Spencer Drury's picked up an injury. I hope he's not properly injured. And then in the second half, we took a while to get going, actually. But Arthur Awusu found Danny Bai, who found Jonathan Edwards. It was all the way back to Neil Dixon, who may be leaving the club very soon. And Craig Palmer finished it at the near post. He had a good second half. Lee Orford scored a penalty. Convincing. A booty on loan. Lomped it up the pitch. Won the ball again, lumped it up again. Here's Orford into Brady Chick. Through to Craig Palmer, who calmly found the back of the net. And he got his hat-trick with a penalty. And was that the last goal? I think so. Anyway, what a, what a brilliant, brilliant win. And Spencer Drury's out for five to six weeks. I'd rather not win 8-0 and keep Spencer Drury, because that's a real blow. It's a bit annoying when it happens... I've let my assistant keep, take control of this game, and I didn't really have any control over that. But Larry Wood is out for three to four weeks. Spencer Drury is going to miss the first couple weeks of the season. That could have a real impact on his season because he's going to be coming in from an injury straight into, I don't know, the fourth week of the season. I said, that is a blow. It really is. So I think we've improved the defensive situation in regards to centre back. We've got enough right backs, we've got enough goalkeepers. We've got Fisher, Edwards, Bye, and Walker as our centre-back options. Tim Green and Stephen Dean as our right-back options. But left-back, we've got Booty. We need to find someone else. I think midfield, it's OK as well. If we sell Neil Dixon, then I guess we'll have to try and bring someone else. But we've got Garber, we've got Marlo, Diaz, Murray, Luciano and Dibba. There, That's a lot of options there. Ali Murray, of course, is a more ball-winning midfielder role in the middle. Um, but other players can play there like Marlo. Luciano is basically a backup for Diaz, I guess, this season. We've got Dibber on the right-hand side and Garber. They can both play as the attacking options going forwards. So I think there's enough strength in depth there. And up front, we've got loads of depth. We've also got Oli Barber that can play in central midfield, of course. So, left-back is a priority. Either improving upon Booty or giving him some cover. Michael Jenkinson doesn't look too bad. He's been playing for Morecambe in League 2. Pretty average average ratings but marking and tackling are not bad let's, let's compare him to booty i just looked on the uh the search option for left backs and this is someone that came up so let's have a look he's slightly better at crossing he's better at marking slightly worse at tackling anticipation slightly worse concentration slightly better positioning is the same worse at teamwork better at work rate and better at stamina slightly worse acceleration so they're de they're both similar but in different ways I can, let's see how much he wants. So he doesn't mind being backup, so that's fine. Let's let's see. Let's he he's an option. Oliver Hawkins. He looks decent. He used to play for Norwich City until recently. Quite aggressive as well, though, which we've kind of had enough of. Oh, I think he's been offered a contract already. This guy would be amazing, but I think he'll probably cost too much. Two point seven million. Kevin Bailey, another Northern Irish player. Hmm. Northern Irish players you can get for hardly anything. Oh, okay. I say, I see, they want 250k. All the other Northern Irish players I've bought have been really cheap. So Michael Jenkinson wants £900 a week. Which feels quite a lot for a player that was playing in League 2 and now is going to be going up to League 1. He's not he's not that great, but... Oh. Guessing we can give him one year, see how he gets on. £800 a week, reduced a few things. Worth a, worth a punt, I think. This guy has the potential to be very good. He's only 19. He's playing for a, a Welsh team. Gap Connors Key Football Club. Interesting name. He could be decent. It'd be like third choice and playing the under-23s this season. How much would they want for him? Nothing. Okay. He wouldn't want that much and he'd just be a hot prospect. 250. Juice the other stuff. Let's give him two years just so he can properly spend some time. In the first, in in the under 23s, having some game time. There we go. Two year contract, two hundred and seventy five pound a week. Well, we need to think about the future, don't we? And he's only nineteen, 
it's going to be 20 soon, so he might not develop. But if we give him a year, well, two years, to see if he can develop. Started at West Ham, remember? So there's, there's something there, I think. So Wolves have offered me the job, but of course, I'm going to have to walk away from that. Because we're staying with Regen Rovers forever. It's our team. And the ploy to try and get the chairman to give us something didn't work. But he might be happy at the fact that I've rejected it and then be like, well, you can have whatever you want, young Paul. Stuart Jenkins has agreed to sign for us. So he will be, third, well, hopefully third choice left back if we also get the other guy in. Will they, ex surely, please do something for me, guys. You have to, you have to give me something. Maybe expand the stadium in preparation. No, financial situation. If the financial situation isn't that bad. I don't understand why he keeps going on about it. I know we're paying, repaying a loan, but I just don't think it's as bad as he's making out. Here we go, Stuart Jenkins has signed. He will go straight into the under-23s and we will train him up. Uh, he needs to improve some defensive attributes. So we'll go for marking to start with. Keep the pitch the same size, I think. It's been working well for us. 726 season tickets sold so far. So training wise, what I'm going to change it to now is we're going to go for team cohesion, keep it on high and then go for teamwork. Actually, we go for ta match tactics still just to make sure we're up to standard. We've still got four friendlies to play before the first game of the season. And the under 23s have managed to win again. Brady Chick, Jack Young and Joe Mohammed with two goals have dropped him to the under 23s permanently for the time being. Because we've got so many strikers in the first team. Hmm, so an agent's come to me with someone called Callum Harding. Doesn't look too bad. Passing 13, Vision 12, Flair 13. He's sort of average at a lot of things. He used to play for Wolves. Started at Chelsea. Does he have the potential to do anything? Maybe we'll scout him quickly just to get an initial opinion on him. So we just lost against Cheltenham Town at home. Not the greatest result in the world, but... Use that old cliche of saying it's all about fitness, isn't it, pre-season? We did play quite well as well. We had 24 shots to their 10 and we created chances. And that's the key thing. As long as you're creating chances, you know you're doing something right with the tactic. It's just just strikers aren't putting the ball in the back of the net enough. And Sibzelis came on towards the end of the game and let in a couple goals, flapped at a couple shots. And we didn't deserve to lose, but it's it really doesn't matter. Because overall, I'm happy with the way we played. And McGuigan scored a really good goal. Danny Boy slammed it out the pitch. Lee Orford did well. And then look at that. Great left-footed finish into the bottom left-hand corner from way outside the box. Don't actually know. Is he left-footed? Let's have a look. Yeah, he's actually left-footed. So it's just nice to have another left-footed striker in the team to go alongside Lee Orford. This guy's been suggested to me by my, my scout or my assistant manager. My chief scout, Gary Roberts, central midfielder for Nottingham Forest. Are we able to get him on loan? Let's have a look, because he actually does look pretty decent. They're not willing to let him go out on loan at the moment anyway. But perhaps if we pay his wages, because he does look good. And would be. I know I said we don't really need any more midfielders, but if we can improve upon the team, then there's no reason not to. 14 passing, 14 vision. He's pretty good at a lot of things. You know, He's average at a lot of things, which is what we need, really, in the midfield. So we'll have a, we'll have a look to see if he wants to come. Neil Dixon has decided to sign for Hull City, so perhaps we do need another midfielder anyway. Ah, wait a second, we're going to have to pay 100 grand to Ballinarmelod United because of the deal that we did with them. So we won't get a massive amount of money, but it could rise to £550,000, so I kind of feel this is the best thing to do overall. He's a, he's a good player, but I don't think we can stop him from joining a championship club, and there's just going to be other teams coming in for him anyway so maybe that's a that's a reason to reject it and hope that another team comes in with more but i'm going to accept it you got to take risks he's not become a part of region rovers you guys don't have an affinity with him he's a young player one for the future but i think this is the right approach we could i mean it's a bit like the garba thing we could make a lot more money out of it in the future and there we go he's gone so the northern irish team suddenly get a load of money that will help them out and our finances will be improved by it as well. And they've just pumped the money into the transfer budget. So we've got a ton of money. Yeah, 30% of the deal they got. Oh, we're going to be on TV for the Arsenal game. That's nice. Never rejected the loan bid. I don't think they really want to loan him out. They probably want to give him a chance in the championship. Oh, this guy looks decent. According to the potential from my scout, Robbie Woodley. 18 years old. 
possibly a direct replacement for Neil Dixon, although he's not quite he's not a defensive midfielder, but he's a as a midfield option. Yeah, I mean he could play either in the end of twenty threes this season or go out on loan. You do have to take risks with players just to see if any of them will come good. That's the whole point of having a youth team, really. See, so yeah, he doesn't want a huge amount. He's not asking for crazy money. We could give him a two-year deal, maybe. Uh, he's got a release clause in 350k. I wouldn't mind if someone came in for that because we're signing him on a free. So let's see what he says. I will quite like a two-year deal just to give that certainty that he's going to be here a while because if it gets six months down the line and he's playing really well, and he wants a crazy amount of money to sign a new deal, then you're a bit stuffed. So having a two-year deal just protects that, I think. Hmm, this guy's transfer listed. My scout, Paul, oh, no, Paul Kelly, sorry, an agent has come to me and said he's transfer listed. Plays for Telford United in the National League North. And he looks good, but he's 26 years old, so he'd be, you know, up there with Jack Young as a, as a player, I guess. So in terms of his age... So maybe he's not that good. He's got great finish, uh, free kick taking though. Let's compare him with Mohamed Garba, for example. I think he's a similar sort of player. Midfielder, advanced playmaker. Uh, so you can see his first touch is worse, but he's slightly better at free kick taking than Garba. Bit worse at passing, bit worse at technique. Vision's better, decisions is worse, composure's the same. Physically, he's a little bit better at certain things, but how much would they want for him? They want 12k. Is it worth the risk? Do we need another central midfield for 12 quid? He's a 26-year-old. He's going to be a player coming right into the team right now. We can, of course, afford him with our transfer budget. But is he the sort of player we... Uh, and if I... Oh, I see how much he wants contract-wise. He wants 1.1k. Uh, let's push that down a bit. He's on 1.1k at the moment. I'd have thought he'd want to earn more, to be honest. But perhaps... I'll get rid of that. Not a sell-on fee. Just push this down a little bit. He could be a set piece specialist for us. That's the thing. It'd be, he's better at free kicks than Stephen Dean, and we know how good Stephen Dean is. He's an interesting player. He sort of stands out. He's got flair. He's got determination, off the ball vision, work right. They all stand out. These attributes. Passing's not the best, but he's all right. He's not played very well over his career. That's the one issue. He's been with Telford a long time after leaving Nottingham Forest, but he's a, an experienced player. He's going to be 27 soon. In fact, he'd be our oldest player in the team if we sign him older than Jack Young. Michael Jenkinson has agreed to sign. That's good news. 24-year-old left-back, experienced, coming into the team. Probably back up. He's agreed to be back up. And he'll probably be back up to Booty. Or maybe his first choice. The similar ability, according to my defensive coach, Neil Brugging. Good to get some experienced players into the team as well as some young players for the future because we need experience at this level. The, heart, the oldest player we can find really is 26, year old, 26 years old going on 27 because that's the start of the save now is nine years ago. So that's, uh, yeah, that Jack Young would have been 17, 16, 17 back then. The team is shaping up nicely. I'm happy. Promotion odds, I doubt they've changed. We're still 1,000 to 1. Let's give Michael Jenkinson a run out then today against Dorking. We need to keep the players, well, get the players up to being completely match fit, don't we? And that's another 8 0 thrashing from the guys. Uh, four goals for Francis Arthur Awuzi. He could come to the four this year, put him as the target man, and he scored four goals. Possibly could be better than Uda. Uda's, of course, injured, and Francis Arthur Awuzi is certainly grabbing his opportunities. Let's have a look at the goals then. Uh, I don't think we've got any injuries in this game either. And <laughs> look at that zero shots to Dorking. Compared to our 27, of course, we're expected to absolutely murder Dorking, I know. And that's what we've done. Arthur Arusi then got a second from the penalty um, spot. This was the third goal. Luciano played today instead of Diaz from the start. Trying to get all our players up to match fitness ahead of the season. So it was actually a chance for Dorking, but a brilliant tackle by Jenkinson, our new signing. And we just counted from there. This is Palmer running through. And great finish. I think it was outside of his foot as well. Lovely stuff. Then this was number four. We're already lost count. <laughs> Arthur Awusu. Great ball out wide to Jenkinson. Our new left back. Putting a ball into the box. And Francis Arthur Awusu got his hat trick. Oh, before the 40 minute mark. And this was straight away from kickoff by the looks of it. Where we managed to get our fifth goal of the game. So they were attacking, holding on to possession nicely, but 
were unable to get a shot away in this game. Jenkinson picked up. It's back to Danny Bai, who came into the team for Reese Walker today. Luciano through to Patrick Dibber. Brilliant ball through to Craig Palmer. He put it to the byline, put a ball in, and McGuigan scored the fifth. Then the, the sixth goal, Garber with the free kick, hit the wall and went in the back of the net. Number seven on the 70th minute mark. We'd made a few changes by this point. Booty had come on, Diaz had come on, Christian Marlow, Arthur Awusu. I think moved over to the right hand side actually. I let my I, once again I let my assistant take control of this by the way. Marlow played it through and Arthur Awusu got his fourth goal of the game. And we rounded it off with an eighth goal. Here we go. Brady Chick running through, put in a cross in, and Lee Orford found the back of the net for eight nil. It's time to choose our squad numbers then. Always a, a big part of the season, isn't it? Um, we're going to have to make Foot Kachara number one now. He's our, he is our number one, isn't he? So he has to be. But who is our main left back? I, I think we'll have to put Michael Jenkinson because he's a permanent player, as Booty, of course, is on loan. And does Gerard Fisher go into being number six and taking away his place? I, I don't think we can do it at the moment. We, def we don't actually know if they're going to definitely be our main centre-back partnership so we'll, we'll leave Danny by his number six position he's been there with that position ever since the, the start hasn't he does Jack Young lose his number 10 this is a huge decision I, I think he will have to I think Spencer Drury should be our number 10 I know a lot of people are saying Spencer Drury is the true legend now of the club so sorry Jack Young for the first time you are losing your old number where is he anyway Jack Young, he can be number 17, and I think we'll go with that. And we're set to sign Des Sheehan. Sheehan, I think is is the actual pronunciation. Sheehan? She Sheehan? Sheehan, probably. So he's coming from Telford United for £11,500. Only £975 a week, two-year contract. He's, he's a different type of midfielder, not heavily relying on his passing ability. We'll see how he gets on. He'll be the oldest player in the squad. Welcome to the team, Desmond. Desmond Sheehan, 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 Sheehan. Yeah, something like that. So he's, yeah, he's going to be 27 in two months' time. Because he's apparently only a two and a half star ability midfielder, which is below the likes of Murray and Diaz, but he's on a par with Dibber and Garber. And we know how good Dibber's been. So I don't see any reason why he can't be a decent player for us. Under 23s have won again, 1 0 win, thanks to Brady Chick goal. Spencer Drury is the fourth favourite to win Golden Boot this year. Wow, that's actually really interesting. That We've had some faith put in one of my players. Who are our key players anyway, according to this? Let's go down. Foot Kachar and Stephen Dean. That makes sense, doesn't it? I think this was the player I was looking to sign, wasn't it? Callum Harding. Had a look at him. Two-star current ability, four-star potential. Perhaps could come into the end of 23s this season. We do need to look for options. He wants a fair amount of money just to be a backup. That's a problem, but I think that's okay. I think we need to take a risk with certain players, don't we? Let's go that two-year contract. Another player can go into the under-23s. He might be good enough for the first team at some point, or he might not. Just trying to build a big enough team, because last season we did have a problem. I loaned out too many players, and we had problems. I'm going to just prune the team, though. Miguel's going to move to the under-23s. Sell out expected for the Arsenal game, that's good news. Oh no, our, our third choice right back, Lee Lovegrove, who I do have some hopes for. I reckon he can be a decent right back. He's got injured for five to seven weeks. So against Arsenal, I'm going to play the, the more simple tactic. We're going to adapt it though. It's going to be more of a defensive thing that we will use when we're playing against a stronger team, essentially. Now, we've sold Neil Dickinson. Neil Dixon, Dickinson, Dix, I've forgotten his name already. That's how much he meant to me. <laughs> um, so we don't really have a, a standard defensive midfielder. I mean, we've got players that could play there. Murray could play there, do a decent job. Uh, Danny Bai can play there, and that's what I'm going to try today. Uh, Kevin Miguel could play there. I think in the end 23s, we do actually have options. We've got our new signing, Johnny Collins. That could probably do a better job than anyone else there. Um, but I want to give him time in the under-23s just to get used to the team. If he's if he does well in the under-23s, then we can play him in the first team, I guess. Danny Bai, this maybe could be his new position. Defensive midfielder. He's a great tackler. He's got the attributes to be a defensive midfielder in my eyes. So maybe this could be 
his long-term position in the team. We actually managed to survive 60 minutes into this game without conceding a goal. <sighs> really unlucky. He joined me with half an hour ago. Fukuchar pulled off a good save and it's a tapping at the back post. But that piece of play there from Arsenal, we did some good tackles. We won the ball back. We are really unfortunate to concede. I was hoping we were going to cling, cling on to a nil-nil draw. What I'm going to do though to maybe try and get a goal back is we're going to just root, go route one to Lee Orford and Francis Arthur Awusu up front. Des Sheehan's going to come on. Booty's going to go to the left back. This pre-season is just about trying to get as many tip players. Match fit. Give them some time. Give them some confidence. Looks like this is going to be a disappointing 1-0 defeat. But we've had 5,335 people turn up for this game. Which is pretty damn good. I know that's what I would expect against Arsenal. Big crowds as we go. 2-0 down. Cracking strike. Couldn't do much about that. We've done ourselves proud. We've only had one shot. But I'm pretty pleased with the performance defensively. We've been good. Danny Byers put in a couple good tackles in defensive midfield. Not created anything. But we've had 50-50 possession. Is this going to be a third? Yeah, it is. That's harsh on us. We've done so well up until this point. Might as well make a couple more changes at the end of this game. I think defensively this tactic will be fine against League One teams if we need to to hang on to any results. But I've still got to focus on the 4-3-3. We know how destructive it can be. And bringing in a few different defenders maybe next season will be a bit more solid at the back. I hope so anyway because at times we were just... We were playing liquid football but the wrong type of liquid football because defensively they were just spilling straight through us. 3-0 loss then. It's not too bad. I won't be too harsh on the guys. Good effort from the chaps. So transfer-wise so far, we've signed a lot of players. This is the most we've signed for a, a while actually. Last season we didn't sign that many, or the season before, or the season before that. It's our most transfers since the 2021-22 season in fact. Of course we have released a few players. We've sold a play for big money. Let's hope he can go on to great things and earn us even more money in the future. And we've only spent £11,500 and that's on our most recent signing. Lots of decent free transfers, one loan signing in booty. I'm, I'm pleased with the strength and depth we have. So I've been reminded about all these players that have one year left on their contract. Now, I'm going to offer a new contract to Patrick Dibbert already. Because he's been such an important part of the team over the last few years. He deserves a new contract. Uh, another, we'll go for two years for now, just add a year onto his current deal and we'll just reduce a couple of other things. He's happy to be back up, he's probably still going to be first choice. I find him better than Garber, he puts in better performances than Garber generally. So we'll go with that, £850 a week, two year deal, great stuff. I don't know if there's anyone else, Pad Paddy Murray I do feel could be very important for us this year but I won't give him a new contract just yet. Francis Arthur Awuso I have high hopes for, but we'll see how he gets on at the start of this season. And there are a few players that we signed this year that we've only given one-year contracts to see how they get on. So Robbie Woodley's joining the club, another central midfield. He's going to go into the under-23s for the time being and see how he gets on. Welcome to the club, Mr. Woodley. Yeah, two-star current ability player. So he's sort of in line with Luciano and, and Marlow and those sort of players but we will just leave him in the end to 23 see how he gets on if he does well he's a ball winning midfielder apparently so he's kind of a good option to play instead of Paddy Murray but Paddy Murray is I think the better tackler if we just look at him no they've both got 10 on tackling I've been trying to improve his tackling it's just not really it has gone up from 8.8 .8 to 9.8 but it's a very slow process for him. Considering he's meant to be a defence midfielder, he's only got 10 on tackling. It's not the best. It's kind of the thing that lets him down a bit. I wonder what happened to Luke Holland. That is a player I wanted to sign at the start of the transfer window, but he wanted too much money. Now he, another midfielder, I know I'm signing tons of midfielders, but he is the perfect option to play in that ball in a midfielder role, I do believe. Let's see how much he wants now that it, we're part of the way through this uh, pre-season. Oh, suddenly it's gone down. Well done, Luke Holland. He wanted like 2.2k. So we can push him right down. He's getting a bit desperate now. But I do think he's got a, he adds some he adds something to our team that we don't currently have. Someone who can just win the ball back. Okay, £550 a week. That's not bad at all. Now I'm signing loads of players. I'm actually going to put Marlow in the under 23s now. He's not got a contract. Uh, he might be useful at some point, but 
I mean, it seems a bit harsh dropping him. He's played so many games over the years for us, 215 league games. And last year, he actually played 20 starts, 13 sub-appearances. He's always been okay, hasn't he? He had two very good years. The first two years, really good average ratings. His third season was okay, 6.89. And since then, uh, been up and down. A couple of years ago, it was very good. But this season, it's dropped back below 6.9. Just adding lots of strength and depth to the team. Luke Holland could also probably play defence midfield as well. But we are going to primarily be going with this. It's fluid, it's quite direct, we're exploiting the middle, we're roaming from positions, we're just trying to throw everything at oppositions. Financial situation is good, once again. And we've just had our Checker Trade Trophy group drawn. So we've got Brighton and Hove Albion under 23s, Charlton Athletic and Ipswich Town. Interesting group, I would hope that we could maybe progress from that but I'm probably going to be a bit more experimental in this competition I know I'm the holders we're trying to defend our title but perhaps I will play or you do have to play at least five players from the previous league game injured players are exempt so you kind of have to stick with a similar team to what you played in the previous match but I would like to try some other things in this competition I don't want Arthur Arusi to get on loan this year I do think he's going to be a first team player let's just get He's not available for loan. Kind of have the belief that he could be decent this year. And we end this pre-season special video with an insane victory against Lincoln City. 6-2. What a game, eh? Just truly astonishing stuff for a buzz. Because we were in six goals from four clear-cut chances. Only 13 shots, remember. We were clinical. Fulkshaw didn't have the best of games, actually. But everyone else was unbelievable in this game. Francis Arthur Owusu, three assists and two goals. A hat-trick from Colin McGuigan as well. And a goal and an assist for, for Palmer. We ran rampant. Let's look at our six goals then to end today's video. Thank you for those of you that have watched up to this point. Of course, it's been a really long video, but I, it's been a highly requested thing that I do since the start of the series where I show you the pre-season. I thought this would be a good idea. It's almost been like a, a live stream that isn't live, I guess, in in its length so hopefully you've just been watching in the background whilst doing other stuff uh, this was the the second goal with McGuigan with the, with the strike he then scored four minutes later now, Garber no Stephen Dean sorry over the top for Francis Awuthu great ball into McGuigan he found the back of the net and then Francis Arthur Awusu scored his first goal of the game Garber into Arthur Awusu back to Palmer into Arthur he's a brilliant strike from him this was our fifth goal, I think. Arthur Awusu through to Craig Palmer, back to Garber, into Sheehan, who's playing in this game, trying to build up his match fitness ahead of the season. Jenkinson, I've got high hopes for it, left back. Uh, McGuigan put a ball in, Arthur Awusu found the back of the net. So this was the sixth goal. They just managed to score a second, and from kickoff, we held onto the ball and found the back of the net. Brady Chicken to Arthur Awusu, great assist, and that was the hat trick for McGuigan. Brilliant, brilliant performance from us against Lincoln City, who currently are in the National League. So we should be winning convincingly against them, but, well, we did it. So there we go. So the first day of the season, the first game of the season, will be against Gillingham in a week's time. So there might be a few things going on behind the scenes up until then. So there might be a couple surprises for you in episode 90. Perhaps we will sign Holland. Uh, I suspect we will. Uh, unfortunately, by the way, Robbie Woodley, who we just signed, has got injured for four to five weeks. Injured in training. And we're going to have to hope Larry Udder and Spencer Drury get back to full fitness very soon. It's only a, about a week until Udder will be back. He won't be able to play in the first game. But there's still up to three weeks for Spencer Drury. So hopefully he gets back soon. Oli Barber is also out still for up to about two weeks. So hopefully those three recover and have an impact on the first team this season. Please smash that like button, it'd be much appreciated. Leave any thoughts in the comment section below. And I will see you in episode 90 of Regen Rovers. Yeah.